the first half of the Grand Line, on the comm belt. A marine warship holding pirate prisoners is heading towards the world's largest prison, Impel Down. At this time, inside the marine warship, in a temporary prison for prisoners. Feel the extra information in my mind. Luo Wen figured it out. He crossed and came to the world of One Piece. But this is not the point. The point is that he was arrested by Marine as a bounty of 30 million, and he was going to be impelled down. You have to find a way to escape. As a traverser, and even a pirate fan, Luo Wen knows where impelled down is. It is the most unbreakable prison, located in the Calm Belt, surrounded by sea kings. It contains the most vicious big pirates. Even the legendary big pirates can only be imprisoned in impelled down. The truth is that the dragon is the tiger can lie down inside. Once inside, not to mention the harsh environment of Impel Down, but the vicious pirates inside are troublesome enough. Just when Luo Wen thought how to escape, ding, detect host traversal, system activation. Ding. Start to detect the host environment and match the corresponding system template. Ding. Host is being sent to a recommended city full of death and despair, and the system template is selected successfully. Ding. Haunted system on. The cold system sound echoed in my mind. A panel appeared in front of Luo Wen. Host, Luo Wen. Strength. A bounty of 30 million, that is, the average strength of the pirates in the world with a bounty of 30 million. Ghost. None, can be drawn by spending scare points. Scare points. 100, props, novice gift pack. At this time, more information about the system appeared in my mind. The system function is very simple. You only need to summon ghosts and let the ghosts scare people. Once the scared person is scared, the system will get corresponding scare points based on the person scared by the ghosts. The scare points can be used to draw ghosts, and can also be exchanged for money. Exchange all things in pirate world, including strength. In addition, at the same time as the ghosts are drawn, the host will also have ghost abilities at the same time. Ding. It is detected that the host has a novice gift package, whether to open it. Luo Wen chose to turn it on without hesitation. Ding. Newbie gift package open. Ding. Host gets Sadako's summoned item, videotape. Sadako can be summoned. Ding. Host gains the ability to create atmosphere, where ghosts are located, even if they are far away, they can easily manipulate the surrounding environment of ghosts to create a horrible atmosphere. Ding. Host gains Saitama physique, exercise will become stronger. This newbie package is too. Dot too great, I am invincible. Luo Wen was surprised. Not to mention the first two things, just the last Saitama physique, I am invincible. It seems I can't leave Impel down yet. That place is perfect for me to exercise. Thinking back to Saitama's physique, it would be invincible after three years of exercise. The cruel environment of Impel down, although dangerous, is also suitable for exercise. After staying there for three years, Luo Wen believes that he is invincible. Could not help. Luo Wen began to imagine three years later, he asked his prison colleagues. Three years to three years, do you know how I spent these three years? Soon. Waved away from the illusion, Luo Wen raised his head to look at the Marine guard in front of the prison fence. Brother Marine over there, I'm looking for Vice Admiral, the Flying Squirrel. I have something to discuss with him. The Marine guard glanced at Luo Wen and ignored it. Pirates sent to impel down are often the case, and they will discuss with the escorting Vice Admiral. As for the content of the discussion, it is nothing more than asking for letting go. But the soldier was thinking. I have something to hand the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral to Marshal Sengoku. It's confidential. Are you sure you want to pretend to be deaf? Luo Wen said something. The Marine soldier was bluffed. After hesitating, the Marine soldier and his companion gave a few words and ran to find the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral. Luo Wen, what do you want to give Marshal Sengoku? Here comes the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral. A good thing that will let you Marine kill the pirate. Luo Wen said motioning Vice Admiral to look at the boots he was wearing. Upon seeing this, the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral pauses slightly, telling the guard to open the cell. Don't think about playing tricks, this is already the calm belt, even if you escape from here, you will be eaten by sea kings. He squatted down and took off Luo Wen's boots. Huh. This is. The Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral found a small thing in his boots. Videotape? That is a videotape. It is the videotape of Zhenzi obtained by Luo Wen. What's recorded here? Vice Admiral asked Luo Wen. Luo Wen grinned, pretending to be mysterious. If you want to know, you will know by looking at it for yourself. Vice Admiral frowned. Seeing Luo Wen's smile, he hesitated for a while. If it was something else, he would not give it to Sengoku. After all, this was something the pirate gave. 
what if there is danger and harm Marshal Marine Sengoku? But. This is a videotape, so it's another matter. This is almost impossible to be dangerous. The only danger that comes to mind is that the thing played is very dangerous, but this kind of danger is impossible to threaten lives. Look at the videotape and make sure it is a videotape, and there is nothing else in it except the videotape. Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral puts away the videotape. Let's say, what do you want to provide this videotape? The person in front of him is a pirate. Vice Admiral, a flying squirrel, does not think that a pirate will provide Marine with good things for free. Don't worry, when Marshal Sengoku finishes watching the video, I will still be honest in my life and inspect the goods first. The flying squirrel Vice Admiral raised his eyebrows. After another conversation, Vice Admiral, the flying squirrel, left with another sentence. Luo Wen, no matter what you give or how valuable it is, the probability that you want to leave Impel down is zero. Because we will be in Impel down one day, and in Impel down, no one can escape from it. Words fall. The flying squirrel Vice Admiral walked out of the cell. On the occasion of leaving, Luo Wen's voice came from behind. Vice Admiral, flying squirrel, ask you something, do you believe there are ghosts in the world? Luo Wen grinned at Vice Admiral, the flying squirrel. After Luo Wen gave the videotape to Vice Admiral, the flying squirrel. The warship holding the criminals successfully sailed into Impel Down. Impel Down, known as the world's most impossible prison to escape, is located on the Grand Line Com Belt. Its unique geographical location and strong defense force make it a copper wall and iron wall. Any criminal who enters Impel Down can feel that. Dayless despair. According to the rules of advancement, all prisoners who are escorted in must undergo a baptism first. This so called baptism is to throw the prisoner into 100 degree water for sterilization. Now, Luo Wen was escorted to the ground floor and was about to accept this terrible baptism. Hey, every time I come here, I feel hot. The jailer who escorted Luo Wen grinned and looked at Luo Wen with ill intentioned eyes. I don't know if you, a guy offering a reward of 30 million, can survive? The voice fell. Luo Wen was directly pushed into the big walk ahead by the jailer. Puff. Luo Wen, who was bound by the chain, had no room to struggle, and fell straight into the big iron pot filled with boiling water. My favorite thing to do every day is to watch these damn criminals scream. The jailer who pushed Luo Wen down took out a cigarette and bit it in his mouth, looking wickedly at the place where Luo Wen fell. The boiling water rolled into a big blister, and Luo Wen was already immersed in it. If it were an ordinary person, the screams now might be worse than killing a pig. After all, it's a 30 million reward. I guess he lasts for 10 minutes? The other jailer next to him smiled and looked good. However, under the gleeful watch of the jailers, bathing in hot water, Luo Wen seems to be in a hot spring, rather than accepting the devastation of boiling water. The jailer who pushed Luo Wen down widened his eyes, abruptly stopped the thought of exclaiming, and said maliciously, This guy must have pretended to be, he is absolutely desperate now, he is holding on. That's right, there are no such people, they pretend to be indifferent on the surface, but in fact they can't hold it anymore, they just have a stiff mouth. The jailers talked and paid more attention to Luo Wen's situation. Time, a little bit passed. One minute, ten minutes, half an hour. The picture that the jailers were looking forward to did not appear. Luo Wen still closed his eyes and looked like he was enjoying the hot spring. He leaned on the edge of the iron pot like this, and even took a nap looking at the appearance. Sleeping bubbles appeared on his nose. This. Are you kidding me? The jailers whispered in disbelief. This has been longer than their first guess for more than 10 minutes. This Luo Wen. Is really a pirate who offers a 30 million bounty. At this moment. Luo Wen was soaking in a boiling water bath. The sleeping bubbles on his nose burst, and he raised his head lazily, looking at the jailer who was watching and expecting him to scream. After washing, what shall I do next? Luo Wen tilted his head. The jailers even saw an expectation from his face. Look at each other speechlessly. In fact, Luo Wen is not afraid of hot water thanks to the videotape that he gave to Vice Admiral, the Flying Squirrel. In the videotape, the Sojourn Ghost is, Sadako. This is also the first ghost drawn by Luo Wen. After drawing Zhenzi, Luo Wen already has all the abilities of Zhenzi, including Zhenzi's physique. According to Luo Wen's words, Zhenzi's pervert ability is exaggerated. Unlike other ghosts, it has super endurance and super strength. And Sadako can be regarded as two conjoined ghosts, a big Sadako and a little Sadako, their abilities are different, Luo Wen has them all. Among them, Xiao Zhenzi's abilities are superb healing skills and healing abilities. Because Luo Wen has acquired these two abilities, he is not afraid of hot water. 
let alone put him on this for two hours, even if it is two months or two years, nothing will happen. This guy's reward is definitely 30 million? All of this was seen by the Impel Down director Magellan who happened to be here. Now. Magellan looked at Luo Wen comfortably soaked in hot water, with a strong interest in her eyes. Increase the firepower and see how long he can hold on. Following Magellan's words fell. The temperature of the big iron pan rises rapidly. In order to baptize the prisoners, the water inside the big iron pot is a special quality, not ordinary water in the true sense. The boiling point can exceed 100 degrees and continue to heat up. Break through 100 degrees, 0 0.200 degrees, 0 0.300 degrees. He, he is still okay. The jailer's eyelids jumped wildly. He wanted to see Luo Wen scream, but in the end he was shocked and his jaw dropped. Luo Wen. It's okay at all. No matter how the temperature increases, Luo Wen still looks like a comfortable bath, and there is no sense of uncomfortable feeling at all. The Marine Bounty Department made a mistake in his judgment. This is a dangerous guy, and his strength is definitely not at the level of 30 million rewards. Magellan frowned and waved his hand. Okay, no need to increase the temperature, get Luo Wen out and take it to the second. No, take it to the third floor. Hear what Magellan said. The expressions of the jailers around were shaking. The third layer, Starvation Hell, is basically a criminal who offers a reward of more than 5,000 W. Luo Wen only offered a reward of 30 million yuan, and he should have been imprisoned on the second floor. But with a word from Director Magellan, Luo Wen made an exception and entered the third level. The jailer hesitated and opened his mouth to say something. But after all, nothing was said in the next second. Luo Wen's performance really deserves to be imprisoned on the third floor. This is definitely a cruel criminal. Marine's reward for him went wrong. The third floor? Luo Wen opened his eyes and he heard Magellan's words. The third layer starvation hell has to endure more severe pain than the second layer, and prisoners will be cut off from food and water and starve to death. But. This is nothing to Luo Wen. After gaining Sadako's physique. To some extent, he can actually not eat anymore? Soon. The jailer walked over and got Luo Wen out of the big iron pot. After inspecting the instruments of torture one more time, Several jailers escorted Luo Wen to the third floor. Just as Luo Wen was walking towards the third floor, the flying squirrel, vice admiral, walked out of the elevator and came to Magellan. Magnellan, you can help pay attention to this man named Luo Wen. Flying squirrel vice admiral frowned slightly, and without concealment he asked Luo Wen to submit a videotape to Sengoku, including asking him if he had any ghosts. Ghost? After listening to vice admiral, the flying squirrel, Magellan looked dumbfounded. Why do you suddenly ask this? Magellan glanced at Luo Wen who was sent away subconsciously, and his pupils shrank violently. This moment. Luo Wen, who was walking towards the third floor, was about to enter the passage, and his whole body was slightly engulfed by dark shadows. But Magellan still saw it clearly, on Luo Wen's shoulder. Sitting on a woman with black yin, wearing a white dress, her face covered by long black hair. Magellan felt her hair explode. At the moment he saw the woman, the woman in the white skirt seemed to be aware, her face covered by hair lifted up and looked in Magellan's direction. Through the gaps in the hair, Magellan clearly saw a pair of weird and exaggerated eyes with white whites. The two looked at each other. Magellan stepped back subconsciously. The woman's eyes were hollow and godless, and they didn't look like a person's eyes at all. If you really want to say, that's the look in the dead man's eyes. The question is a dead person, why can he raise his head and look at himself? However, when he rubbed his eyes, he looked at Luo Wen again. But see. Luo Wen's shoulders are empty. The black-haired woman was gone. It seems that everything before is an illusion that does not exist. Illusion? Magellan's eyes widened slightly, uncertain. What happened to you? Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral noticed Magellan's change, turned his head and asked suspiciously. Did you see it just now? Magellan's eyelids twitched, her tone faintly faint. See what? Vice Admiral, the Flying Squirrel, frowned. Magellan hesitated a little, then glanced at the passage where Luo Wen disappeared. Just now, there seems to be a woman on Luo Wen's shoulder. Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral, a few days later. Naval Headquarters, Marine Ford, Marshal Sengoku's room. Marshal, this is the pirate named Luo Wen, the videotape to be handed to you. The Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral walked to Sengoku's desk and handed a videotape to Sengoku with both hands. Then, the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral hesitated a little, and then repeated what Luo Wen had asked him. Ghost? This pirate named Luo Wen is a bit interesting. I hope that there are any secrets in his videotape and will not waste my time. 
Sengoku smiled and took the videotape from the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral. Then I will leave first. Dot huh. Garp Vice Admiral. The Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral paid a military salute, and when he left, he happened to pass by a burly figure. Sengoku, my senbei is finished, give me a little bit of yours? Garp grinned and walked in carelessly, sitting on the sofa across from Sengoku, lifting his legs. Wait, I'll give it to you after watching the tape. Sengoku said. Videotape? Garp asked curiously, learned about the videotape, not surprised. Huh? There is still such a thing. Next moment. Garp leaned forward and grinned. Sengoku, watch a movie together. Sengoku and Garp sat side by side on the sofa. In front of the two, the videotape was put into the projection phone worm. As the gear rotates, the picture in the videotape is parsed and projected on the screen. Crack. Garp opened the senbei, grabbed a piece and threw it into his mouth, biting it with a rattling sound, making it look like watching a movie casually. The picture is out, Sengoku said, as his voice fell. The snowflake screen on the curtain ends. The picture is completely dark, it seems that the shooting environment is in the dark night, and it is not very clear to see. Next moment. The camera suddenly zoomed in, and the center of the picture was occupied by a well. What's this? Garp snapped at Senbei, frowning. The head of the well is dark and the light is also dark, making it difficult to see the inside. Sangoku straightened his waist, leaned forward, and narrowed his eyes to see the picture in the well. At this moment, there is a touch of white in the black and pressurized well head. A woman with disheveled hair and long black hair covering her face, crawled out of the well a little bit. The moment when the woman in white completely climbed out of the well and stood in front of the screen. The picture is interrupted and everything returns to calm. The videotape is over. This. What is it? Sangoku was taken aback. He wasn't scared, he just felt stunned. What's this all about? Garp ate the senbei bit by bit, turning his head to look at Sangoku. Sangoku, you started talking about the pirate who gave you the videotape, saying that the footage in the videotape can deal with the pirate? Can this thing really deal with? Sangoku, you have been tricked by a pirate with a reward of 30 million. Sangoku heard the words. With a twist of his thick eyebrows, he grabbed Garp's senbei like a grudge. Just when he was about to rebut, the two of them seemed to feel something, and turned their heads almost at the same time, looking towards the back of the sofa. However, empty, nothing, is it an illusion? The movements of Sangoku and Garp were at the same time, and doubts arose in their hearts. In the last second, they actually felt someone standing behind them at the same time. Maybe it's been staring at the videotape for a long time, and the flying squirrel mentioned that Luo Wen said there is no ghost, so I have an illusion? Sangoku said to himself. After interrupting like this, Sangoku didn't have the mood to fight Garp again. He shook his head, ready to turn off the projection phone bug and take out the videotape. It is at this time, there was movement outside the office. Celestial dragons with a bubble cover on their heads, escorted by several CP personnel in black suits, broke in with a high-profile posture. He subconsciously glanced at the footage played on the videotape. Sangoku, you have time to watch the video here, so quickly escort me home. I will return to the Holy Land Marie Joys tonight. It's so boring here. St. Charles Rose looked arrogant, looked away from the videotape, and swept around with disgusting eyes. It seems to him, staying in naval headquarters is a kind of boring torture. Master Chalrose, there is a storm tonight and it is not suitable for traveling, so I will go back on another day. Sangoku persuaded after a little thought. Sangoku is right. Storms are prone to accidents. This storm will not last long. It is estimated that these two days will pass. Garp also got up from the sofa, persuading him sideways, he added at the end. Today's dinner is ready. Let's take a rest after dinner and set sail. He doesn't like celestial dragons himself, but no matter what, he can't watch St. Charles Roth doing stupid things. If you really set sail under the heavy rain and eventually encounter an accident, the entire marine will be implicated. Dinner? Charles Rose's holy eyes rolled, and his fat hand waved like a coon king. That's it, take another day off, and you must leave when the storm passes. I hope the dinner will not disappoint me, St. Charles Rose left behind these words. Twisting his fat body, under the escort of the CP staff, he left Sengoku's office in a high-profile manner. Get the troublesome master. Sengoku shook his head and turned to take out the videotape from the projection phone bug. Just this time. The Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral went back and forth, and after dealing with the matter, he came to the office again to report the situation. Flying Squirrel, lose it, this thing has no meaning. Sangoku threw the videotape to Vice Admiral, the Flying Squirrel, his face was not pretty. As Marshal Marine, he was swayed by a pirate who offered a reward of 30 million. 
no one would have a good face. What's more, the content of the videotape is unknown. Yes, Marshal Sengoku. The Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral took the videotape, and the moment he turned and left, his face also collapsed. He was irritating himself, and he was actually played by the pirate. After walking out of the office, Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral's adjutant greeted him from the side. Sir, is there anything in this videotape? The adjutant blinked, looking curious. He followed the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral into Impel Down, knowing that Luo Wen gave the videotape. It's no use, we were fooled. The Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral shook his head, took out the videotape, and threw it to the adjutant. You go and get rid of the videotape, this time I owe it to thinking. The Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral's face was cold, and the pace under his feet accelerated, and quickly disappeared at the end of the corridor. F asterisk ked by. The adjutant stayed where he heard the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral's words. He lowered his head and looked at the videotape in his hand several times. Then. The adjutant made a decision, he intends to see what is in this videotape first. The curiosity has been aroused, and it will be okay to see and deal with it, the adjutant said to himself. He didn't think it was anything. Just a videotape, there is no danger, at most a little time is wasted. As it happens, there are no tasks this afternoon. That afternoon. About the videotape, it spread within Marine. Many Marines are curious. Sangoku and Vice Admiral, the Flying Squirrel, could tell the videotape that was tricked. What would it be? In order to satisfy the curiosity of the adjutant, he took the videotape and walked into an idle conference room. At this time, in the conference room, many Marines who heard the wind rushed over, there were hundreds of people. Among them are Rear Admiral and Captain. Even Vice Admiral, the famous Fire Mountain at Naval Headquarters, is here. They were all curious and planned to come and see what happened. It started. The Marines got together. The videotape starts to play. Uh, a well? Huo Shao Shan squinted, biting the cigar in his mouth. The picture soon changed again. A woman crawled out of the well? The Marines looked at each other, and some people felt slightly uncomfortable due to the picture. But in the end, they are all elites who have been killed from the battlefield, and it is impossible to have much emotional fluctuations because of this. That's it. It's weird that I was fooled. The adjutant squashed his mouth, took out the videotape boringly, and threw it into the trash can in the conference room. It's a waste of time, and it's gone. Hu Shaoshan Vice Admiral stood up and left with a smile while biting his cigar. The other Marines who came together all spoke time wasting words and left the meeting room boringly and returned to their posts. Soon. The meeting room is empty. Only the videotape, lying quietly in the trash can. What no one noticed is, the moment the lights in the meeting room went out. The videotape in the trash can, the internal gears are spinning, and it seems to be playing. The night the videotape was discarded, the dinner is over. Under the protection of the crowd, St. Charles returned to the special room prepared for him by naval headquarters. Master Charles rose, welcome back. His wife walked out to greet her, her eyebrows lowered and her eyes bowed as she spoke. In his expression, it is not difficult to see the fear. St. Charles Roth is a pervert, married thirteen wives in total, and will discard it without hesitation once he gets bored. But these things are only spread in Marie Joy's, no one outside knows. This time, St. Charles Roth is still as usual, bringing a wife out when he is out of the tour. You come with me today. St. Charles Rose picked up the iron chain that fell on his wife's neck and led it back to the room like a dog. His wife served celestial dragons tremblingly. Just as she was undressing St. Charles and getting ready to go to bed. Sudden. The video phone worm placed on the table in the room opened up on its own. The eyes of the untouched video phone worm lit up, projecting an image in midair. Hear the babble. Um? St. Charles Rose and her wife subconsciously looked towards the blurred black and white image of the image. In the black and white picture, in the empty uninhabited woods, there is an old well of Madara. If it weren't whirling, it makes people think that the picture is still. Upon seeing this, St. Charles Rose looked angry. Isn't this a videotape from the morning? Do you dare to confuse my video phone worm? He remembered that this was when he went to find Sengoku Garp. The videotape they are watching. Now, some people dare to use their video phone worm to put this kind of unknown thing. He wants to punish the ignorant servant. Use a barbed iron whip to beat it fiercely. Suddenly, the seemingly still image screen changed, making a weird sneer. Next moment. In the deep and deep well of Madara, a pale hand stretched out, and a weird woman in a pale dress and black hair with a split face crawled out, and then moved in a weird way, like a teleport. People appear in the front of the screen from far to near. Then. Under the horrified gaze of Charles Lewisheng and his wife. 
The weird woman in white in the video frame stretched out her hand from the frame, followed by her head and her whole body crawling out of it. Boom. On a stormy night outside the window, the thunder blasted, and the lightning pierced the sky, illuminating the room through the window. Ah. Accompanied by thunder, the high decibel scream cut through the silent night. This night. It wasn't just the screams in Chalra Saint's room. Naval headquarters had screams in succession, resounding through the thunderstorm night sky, breaking the night's sleep. Um. Sangoku and Garp, who were about to go to bed, opened their eyes suddenly. Their keen perception allowed them to hear the screams clearly in the thunderstorm. Naval headquarters screamed, there is no need to hesitate at all. In their respective rooms, the two got up quickly in a unified pace, wanting to see what happened. However, they just got up, and their movements took a halt at the same time. They were surprised to find out, on his arm, a black handprint appeared. The five fingers were slender, as if there was a thin woman, firmly grasping their arms and leaving a mark. But Sengoku Garp in sleep doesn't have the slightest impression. Too late to think. Forcibly suppressed the surprise in my heart. Sengoku and Garp stepped out of the room at the same time, and quickly rushed to the source of the Scream Celestial Dragon's Charles Rose's room. Enter the door. The eye catching picture makes them look stiff as if struck by lightning. St. Charles Rose. Dead. He fell on the ground, his fat body was cold, his eyes widened, his eyeballs protruding, bloodshot, and his expression terrified. As if before dying, St. Charles saw a terrifying picture. Sangoku's face was ugly. As the highest fortress of marine, naval headquarters has undoubtedly the highest level of defense. Before this, no one had been able to sneak into the headquarters. Not to mention killing people silently, the more important point. In the current naval headquarters, CP agencies are secretly deploying manpower to protect the naval headquarters due to the arrival of St. Charles Rose. Sangoku alone knows that there are two CP zeros that protect St. Charles. But. St. Charles Rose is still dead, just die in his own room. You know that CP0 itself is the most assassinated and hidden person by the Grand Master, even their eyes and ears can be concealed. Just then, Sangoku's and Garp's pupils shrank at the same time. They see clearly. On the neck of St. Charles Rose, a jet black palm was deeply imprinted. Lingering, as if embedded in his flesh and blood. Is it a palm print again? Sangoku and Garp were surprised. The two looked at each other, with a trace of consternation in their eyes. This palm print, no matter how you look at it, is very similar to the one on your body. Ghost, ghost. The wife of St. Charles Rose curled up in the corner, her pretty face pale and trembling, and she kept repeating these words in her mouth. Sangoku and Garp looked at each other. The hearts of the two people sank at the same time. Ghost? Marshal, in addition to Lord Cheris, several people died, and Rear Admiral of Sri Lanka. At this moment, a marine soldier walked into the room with an ugly face. Someone else died. Sangoku was about to ask, but the words to his lips stopped, his eyebrows jumped. He suddenly found out. The marine soldier who was reporting the situation had an eye-catching mark on his wrist. Dark and weird. Is exactly the same as the palm print of the woman on his arm? Take us to the place where the accident happened, Sangoku ordered without hesitation. Also, what's the matter with the palm print on your wrist? What? The soldier was stunned, and subconsciously raised his hand to take a look. The whole person shuddered directly. This. I. I don't know. Sangoku looked at the soldier's horrified expression, and no longer asked, but remembered the incident in his heart. He turned around and told the marine soldier who was guarding the gate of Charles Rose. Don't move anything in this room, Vice Admiral Flying Squirrel, Vice Admiral Hu Shaoshan, they will come over immediately and take care of this place. Finish this sentence. Sangoku Garp quickly walked towards Rear Admiral's room. Wait until they enter and see the condition of the corpse. The faces of the two of them are extremely solemn and ugly. On the neck of the dead Sri Lankan Rear Admiral, there is a pair of dark female palm prints. It's exactly the same as the black handprints I saw before, absolutely by one person. Convene the highest meeting of the department and notify all Vice Admiral personnel stationed in the department and people with black fingerprints on their bodies, so that they can get to the meeting room as soon as possible. Sangoku rubbed his eyebrows, his expression heavy and serious. This matter must be thoroughly investigated. Just half an hour. The highest meeting room of naval headquarters, brightly lit, illuminates the dark night of a party. Every seat in the spacious conference room is full. It's not just a ghost with a black handprint on his body, Marine. Even Vice Admiral, who had no mission, was there. Although not all Vice Admiral have black handprints on their bodies, as Marine Vice Admiral, 
someone in their headquarters has somehow died, even a celestial dragons. It is impossible for Vice Admiral not to gather. Among them, nature includes the flying squirrel Vice Admiral. The results of the investigation are preliminary. All Marine soldiers with black handprints have one thing in common they have all seen the videotape. White clothes? Black hair covering your face? Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral's expression suddenly changed after hearing the soldier's description of the woman in the videotape. In an instant, he thought of what Magellan said. At that time Luo Wen was escorted into the third tier prison. Magellan said he saw a ghost-like woman standing on Luo Wen's shoulder. Appearance. Isn't it just white clothes and black hair covering your face? Marshal Sengoku, Magellan was impelled down at the time. The Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral's eyelids twitched slightly, telling everything that was originally in his heart. After listening to Vice Admiral, the Flying Squirrel, Sengoku and Garp were surprised at the same time. The two looked at each other. The eyes of both parties are telling the same cognition. That videotape. Dot has a problem. Jesses, what did you do with the videotape? The Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral also realized that there was something wrong with Lu's thoughts at this moment, and suddenly turned to ask the adjutant. The trash can in the meeting room. When the adjutant was asked suddenly, he seemed to be taken aback, and his whole body trembled slightly. Go get the tape back. Sengoku looked at the adjutant. This. I. Don't want to go. The adjutant hesitated, his eyes avoiding. Don't want to go? Sengoku frowned slightly. I. I saw that female ghost with my own eyes. The adjutant's voice trembled. Sri Lanka Rear Admiral, who happens to be his roommate. The adjutant had a big life and was not killed by the female ghost, but the shadow in his heart was indelible. He saw with his own eyes the white clothed woman emerged from the TV, hung upside down on the wall, withered like wood, crawling towards Rear Admiral, a sleeping Sri Lanka, in an extremely twisted way. That moment. The adjutant's body was cold, as if being held down by a tens of thousands of pounds of rocks, unable to move anymore. He can swear. That's not an illusion, is that a human or a ghost? The short marine in the same dormitory shuddered and said this abruptly. The voice resounded in the conference room, the audience is silent. After all, the adjutant did not dare to get the videotape. Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral didn't embarrass his subordinates and went to find the videotape himself. Fortunately, the garbage in the headquarters today is processed early the next morning. Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral found the discarded videotape in the garbage truck. The videotape was taken back to the conference room by him. Sangoku stared carefully. The appearance of the videotape does not have any special, ordinary videotape. Hugh Shao Mountain Vice Admiral, you go to impel down to find Luo Wen who sent this video. When Sangoku said this, the conversation suddenly changed, no, I will go personally. He stood up and looked at Garp. Garp, the headquarter is handed over to you, and the guy who dared to do evil in the headquarter is caught, even if she is a ghost, she must be arrested. At the same time that naval headquarters set off a night of shock. Impel down. The third floor is starvation hell. As the number of layers in the middle position. The severity of starvation hell far exceeds that of the first and second layers. The heat from blazing hell on the lower layer penetrated the steel plate, making this layer extremely hot. Ordinary people who just stay for half an hour are at risk of dehydration and fainting. The prisoners detained here not only have to endure the torture of the high temperature, but also have to be on hunger strike. After a long time, they will be half dead. Visible occasionally. In the prison, the prisoner was as thin as wood, with only skin and bones left on his body, as if his limbs would be broken by chains when he moved slightly. Even. In some cells, the prisoners are no longer visible, only one or two bones piled on the ground. Now. Luo Wen was detained on this floor. Being threatened and suppressed by other prisoners. Hey, newcomer, I have the final say on this site. If you want to stay here well, without lack of arms or legs, you will find something to eat in the future and you must hand it over to me. In the same cell, the skinny looking pirate prisoner stared at Luo Wen proudly. Beside the skinny pirate, a group of prisoners gathered together and looked at Luo Wen with a smile. The reason why they attacked Luo Wen, it's because Luo Wen offered a reward of only 30 million yuan, and the persimmon was soft, and it was also because. Luo Wen, this guy, looks a little crazy. The skinny pirate saw it several times, and Luo Wen muttered to herself in the corner. If it weren't for this cell to be so big, and the skinny pirate clearly saw Luo Wen's side empty, he would really think Luo Wen was talking to, someone. Hear the words of the skinny pirate. Luo Wen raised his head. Glanced at each other. At this moment, a strange scene appeared. In this slightly dark, damp prison. The voice of a girl who is permeating hairy and immature sounded abruptly. 
Master, they have desecrated you, can I kill them? The source of the sound. Beside Luo Wen? Obviously no one. The prisoners' eyes widened, in their incredible gazes. The air, beside Luo Wen twisted. A gloomy black-haired girl in a white dress appeared out of nowhere. Stand in front of everyone. That's Xiaojenko. The skinny pirate's eyes widened, and only felt a breath of cold air breaking through the top of his head. At this moment, he finally understood that Luo Wen was not talking to himself, but there was a person next to him. Hear the words. Luo Wen looked at the prisoner and paused, yes. The voice fell. In the dark cell, a screaming scream suddenly sounded. In the surrounding cells, all the prisoners who heard this voice tremble subconsciously, feeling panic from the bottom of their hearts. They turned their heads. Looking at the cell where Luo Wen is located, his eyes widened, his throat shook, and he immediately retracted his gaze, never daring to look at it again. Not long. The screams ceased. The darkened cell was covered with blood. The thick blood was flowing on the ground, there were stumps and arms everywhere, and no corpse was intact. It's like a doll that has been destroyed and dismantled. Xiao Zhenzi held a dripping arm in her hand, and stood in front of Luo Wen obediently. Master, all are killed, no one will be left. Luo Wen nodded. I'm hungry, Xiao Zhenzi helps me find something to eat. Hear the words. Xiao Zhenzi said obediently, and her petite figure disappeared again. But if you look closely, you can find it. At the door of the cell, a series of bloody footprints appeared, went all the way along the door, and disappeared at the end. Watching the bloody footprints leave, Luo Wen closed his eyes slightly. Just when he was about to take a nap, the system prompts in my mind sounded one after another. Ding. Scared Sengoku, scared point plus one oh. Ding, scared Garp, scared point plus one oh. Ding, scared to Sri Lanka rear admiral, scared point plus four. Ding, scared marine soldiers, scared point plus one. Ding, all of a sudden, hundreds of tones sounded one after another. Luo Wen narrowed his eyes. Thoughts emerged in the heart. Through these tones, he knew something. The more you use ghosts to scare powerful people, the more scared points you will get. The average marine soldier is one point at a time, while the Sengoku is ten times. Killing people does not increase the scare point. Luo Wen leaned against the wall and murmured softly. The medium of Sadako's murder was videotape. He didn't kill all marine soldiers who watched the videotape. He just chose to kill some marine soldiers who behaved badly and corrupted. Through Sadako's eyes, he saw these soldiers embezzling, accepting bribes, oppressing civilians, etc. It can be said that these people are not worthy of being called marine at all. Also through these corruptions marine's death. Luo Wen tested that the fear before death is not a fright, and it cannot bring more fright. Call out the system panel. Host, Luo Wen. Strength. 35 million bounty, without using the power of ghosts. Ghost. Dako Sadako, scare points, 304. Props. Videotape, Saitama's physique is really perverted. Just soaking in 300 degrees hot water for half an hour will increase my strength of 5 million in bounty. If I exercise every day, it will take less than a month or two for my strength to exceed 100 million in bounty. Luo Wen said to herself. Saitama's physique is really a mystery. Just doing some basic exercises such as long distance running and doing push-ups every day can be powerful enough to burst the planet. Throughout the 10,000 realms, you may not be able to find a second such special physique. Converge your thoughts. Luo Wen looked at the startled point again. This time, a total of 194 shock points were obtained. It can be said that the harvest is rich, let's draw a prize. Luo Wen thought in her heart. The system's lottery is 300 startle points once, and a ghost is randomly drawn. Ding. Consume 300 scare points to draw ghosts. Ding. Host gets the ghost, toilet Hanako, the moment the beep fell. The temperature of the air in front of Luo Wen dropped suddenly. A little girl in a red suspender dress appeared out of thin air with an extremely sudden speed and way. She twisted her neck, raised her numb and hollow eyes, and met Luo Wen's gaze. Owner, with her hands on her back, Shalwazi cried out obediently and respectfully. Hanako, clean up this place. Luo Wen pointed to the bloody prison cell. Although he doesn't feel nauseated by the bloody, but the place where he lives must be clean. Yes, master. Hanako nodded gently. The next moment she disappeared, the dirt and blood on the ground, like being wiped off by an invisible eraser, quickly faded. You have to be more scared. Luo Wen glanced at the fading blood on the ground, we have to spread the videotape. At the same time Luo Wen was planning to spread the videotape. Impel down. The fourth floor blazing hell, the director's office. Gulagulu. 
There was a sound of running water. The door to the toilet opens. The lavender gas gushes out. Magellan, who had just shit, walked slowly out of the poisonous mist, rubbing her aching belly. At this moment, the guards trot to Magellan holding a phone worm wearing a gas mask. Director Magellan, Marshal Marine is looking for you in a hurry. Um? Magellan was a little confused, and reached out his hand to take the phone bug wearing a gas mask. The next second, the phone worm was connected. Magnellan, I'm going to visit your side. The snail's mouth opened, and Sengoku's solemn voice sounded, telling Magellan what happened in the headquarters. After listening to Sengoku's words, Magellan's pupils shrank sharply. Celestial dragons died in naval headquarters. Who did it? As far as Magellan can remember, the death of celestial dragons has not occurred. Celestial dragons, known as the nobles of the world, even if they are disturbed by a collision will cause Marine E, Admiral and CP0 to come out for protection. Such the most expensive big man actually died in the heavily protected naval headquarters? The murderer should be a woman in white. The phone worm resembling Sengoku's appearance spoke again. Magellan opened her mouth slightly and looked surprised. Woman in white. Never heard of such powerful pirates and criminals in Grand Line or New World who can sneak into naval headquarters to kill celestial dragons. But the next second, Magellan heard Sengoku's description of the woman in white. Black hair splits his face, weird like a ghost. How can this be? Magellan was stunned. Isn't this the woman he saw from Luo Wen? A kind of horror comes from the heart. It's not an illusion, is it real? Magellan frowned, her face a little ugly. At first he thought what he saw was an illusion, but now it seems. Marshal Sengoku, I will arrange everything here, you can come over at any time. A thought arose in Magellan's mind. After saying this, he immediately hung up the phone. Then, Magellan looked at the guards beside him and gave the order. Let Hanaibal take Luo Wen from the third floor to another prison and transfer him to the sixth floor. Heard this sentence. The guards' eyes straightened, and they were stunned. Change Luo Wen to the sixth floor eternal hell? It is important to know that the criminals detained at this level are all people who committed heinous crimes. Their sins even require the world government to erase traces from history in order to appease the people. But when Luo Wen just went to jail yesterday, he was just a prisoner who was just qualified to be detained on the second floor. A prisoner who was supposed to be on the second floor, to the third and then to the sixth overnight. This is something that the entire impel down has never happened since its establishment. Magellan saw the shock of the guards in his eyes, and he didn't intend to explain too much. In his opinion, Luo Wen, with a bounty of only 30 million, is eligible to be imprisoned on the sixth floor of eternal hell. Magellan knows that the death of St. Charles Rose has a high probability of being inseparable from Luo Wen. And such a person who can kill and dare to kill celestial dragons can no longer use the bounty to measure his viciousness, and only the sixth layer can imprison this evil spirit. Finish this sentence. Magellan ignored the guard's astonishment and horror, and ran to the toilet quickly. My stomach hurts again. I have to go and solve it quickly. It's just the moment when I just ran out of the corner and passed the corner of the toilet. Magellan didn't know if he was dazzled again. Vaguely. As if seeing a little girl in white clothes flashing past the corner of the road ahead? Child? Magellan muttered suspiciously. This is a prison. It is impossible for children to go in and out, not to mention that the location of his office is the fourth hot hell. If there are any children coming in, they will be fainted by the dehydration caused by the high temperature baking in a few minutes. Magellan wanted to figure it out, but the grunting pain in his stomach made him unable to think about it. He hurriedly made three steps and two steps, rushed into the toilet, closed the door and pulled it wildly. Impel down the other side. Deputy Director Han Ibal is leading several jailers, walking towards the third floor starvation hell where Luo Wen is located. As the impact of the killing of St. Charles Roth was too bad, in the case of no approval above, it must be strictly blocked. Therefore, in the impel down at this time, only Director Magellan knew about this. Even Han Ibao, who was tasked to change Luo Wen's cell, didn't know this. Let a pirate with a reward of 30 million go to LV6, Magellan is crazy. By the way, it is probably diarrhea and diarrhea. Very good. If I report this matter, Magellan may be demoted. I will be the director by then, ha 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 ha. Han Ibao spoke out his heart without hesitation thinking about the days when he would sit on the throne of the director in the future, it was so cool that people would fly. However, Han Ibao did not forget what was going on, and quickly rushed to the cell where Luo Wen was on the third floor of starvation hell. Just approached. A strong smell of blood rushed over his face. Han Ibao's face changed. Luo Wen in the cell also noticed the arrival of Han Ibao, looked at some place in the prison, 
and motioned to Hanako who had cleaned the cell halfway to go out to play. Huh. The bloody blood that had been disappearing quickly stopped, and a gloomy wind blew by Hanayabal's side, and the strange movement calmed down. Hanayabal, who had just entered the cell, didn't notice it. Seeing the blood stains that Hanako hadn't cleaned, Hanayabal's expression changed again. There are bloody limbs everywhere, broken internal organs can be seen everywhere, and even half of the head, white flowers flowing on the ground, the picture is like purgatory. Although prisoners fight casualties frequently and impelled down, all the prisoners in this cell were killed, and their deaths were so tragic that there was no complete body. This is the first time Hanayabal has seen such a bad situation. You must know that the prisoners who can be imprisoned on the third floor of the starvation hell have at least a 50 million bounty, and they are basically not long and narrow, even if someone is stronger than others. But no matter what, it is impossible to kill all the other prisoners in the entire cell with one enemy and many. Not to mention, Luo Wen's rewards did not reach the 50 million pass line at all. This guy, really is a 30 million bounty. At this moment, Hanaibao somewhat understood why Luo Wen was named and imprisoned by Magellan into the sixth floor. At least, Luo Wen's strength is definitely not the third level. Ding, scared Hanaibao, deputy director of Impel Down, scared plus three. Ding, scared Impel Down the jailer, scared plus one. Listen to the beep in the ear. Luo Wen's eyelids lifted slightly. The next moment, driven by Hanaibao, several jailers took Luo Wen out of the cell, preparing to go to the sixth floor of the eternal hell. I said, my ass is not hot yet, where are you taking me? Luo Wen moved the shackles on his hands and asked with a smile. When you sit hot, all the prisoners on this level are dead. Hanaibao turned his head and glanced at Luo Wen. Impel down, eternal hell. This is a prison that is permanently kept secret from the outside world and is a hell of a hell unknown to the public. All criminals imprisoned here are sentenced to permanent imprisonment, and they have to use chains to trap their life's fierce evil spirits. Now, under the leadership of Hanaibao, Luo Wen has come to eternal hell. He was imprisoned on the opposite side of Ace and Jinbei's cell. Our sixth floor is very lively recently. In a cell, Bask Chote, with a long nose and red cheeks, tilted his head and looked at the room where Luo Wen was, with a weird and funny smile on his face. Several prisoners came in succession. With these words, Bask Chote's eyes rolled steadily, and he looked at Ace and Jinbei in the cell opposite Luo Wen. This moment, when Luo Wen was escorted into the cell of Eternal Hell. The chain rattles in the Eternal Hell, and a person's head is shaking. Too many prisoners in the dark raised their heads and looked at the seemingly young newcomer. Even Jinbei and Ace are also observing their prison buddies. Because of the particularity of the sixth layer of Eternal Hell, there used to be a long time interval before a prisoner came. There were too few people who were capable of committing heinous crimes, and even fewer people were qualified to be imprisoned here. But the convention has been broken recently. Eternal hell came all at once, Ace, Jinbei. Now here comes another newcomer who looks very young. This makes the prisoners who have not seen the sky all the year round wondered, what did this new guy? What did he commit? I haven't seen this guy. You're so young, isn't it Whitebeard's son again? Which companion came this time, it's very face to face. Hanayabal. What kind of unreasonable things did this guy do to come to this level, how much bounty is there? The ghosts in the dark asked one after another. Hanayabal became impatient when asked, and answered casually. A marine branch was set on fire, with a reward of 30 million. The words came out. The scene was suddenly quiet. Huh. Are you kidding me? The bounty is 30 million? Are you sure it is not wrong, it is 300 million? Hey, Hanayabal, are you guys playing fun with us? Bask Chote tilted his head leaned forward to the iron railings of the cell, and stared at Hanayabao. I have no time to lie to you. Hanayabao curled his lips, and at the same time picked up the trident and slammed it on the ground, motioning the damned prisoners to calm down. This, upon seeing this, too many prisoners are shocked. Hanayabal didn't look like he was joking. In other words, this new young man really only has a reward of 30 million. Every prisoner who cares about this matter has a strange look on his face burned a marine branch and offered a reward of 30 million yuan. As for someone to be imprisoned in the eternal hell? Isn't marine working? Even this item is put on this floor to make up for it. There was unceremonious sarcasm from prisoners in the darkness. Especially the prisoners who were in the same cell with Luo Wen felt that Luo Wen's arrival had lowered his level. What's a joke, Hanayabao, you can change the cell to this newcomer now, this kind of trash guy is not qualified to be in the same cell as me. In the same cell of Luo Wen, a prisoner whose hands and feet were locked in shackles showed disdain. From his look, 
it was a humiliation to be in the same cell as a prisoner with a bounty of only 30 million. Even if given a chance, he will kill Luo Wen in the cell. Hanayabal didn't bother to pay attention to the prisoner and turned to leave. The moment he turned around, Hanayabal grinned. If Luo Wen dies on the sixth floor, it is estimated that Magellan will be demoted, and then I can be promoted. As he said, Hanayabal trembled inexplicably and looked back subconsciously. I don't know if it's because of the freezing hell on the eternal hell, it feels so cold suddenly, like a cold wind blowing on my back neck. Hanayabal didn't care much, shook his head and took a few jailers away. Boom. The door of eternal hell, closed again. Now. Hanayabal's departure made eternal hell quiet for a short time, and the next moment too many eyes looked at Luo Wen's cell, a pair of eyes flashed playfully in the dark. Putting down the words to let Luo Wen change to the tall prisoner, he stood up suddenly. The chains rattled. One of his eyes stared at Luo Wen coldly. Since Han Iabao didn't want to change your cell, don't blame me. The tall prisoner had a cold voice and walked towards Luo Wen step by step, twisting his wrists and neck while walking, his joints crackling. For them, the criminals imprisoned in eternal hell, it doesn't feel like killing a pirate at all, even if Luo Wen didn't do anything to them. Hey, it's almost done, there is no need to do this. Ace, in the cell opposite, saw this scene change. The evil king, what are you going to do? Jinbei made the same sound, frowning, his face was not pretty. They couldn't stand it, they just wanted to kill people just in the same cell, and they all wanted to stop them. But they are not in the same cell as Luo Wen, there is no way to really help, and words can't help. The evil king is still walking towards Luo Wen step by step. Those who can be imprisoned at this level are the strong, and it is impossible for them to change what they have to do because of a few words from other people. Hulala. The chains rattled. The evil king stood in front of Luo Wen, his sturdy wrists raised, and there was cruelty in his eyes. There is no doubt that the next moment he will start to get rid of this 30 million yuan bounty waste that has dropped the price. It is at this moment, Luo Wen raised his head. He saw clearly the face of the prisoner who walked in front of him. Blue haired horns. Abalo Pizarro, the evil king. Do you believe in ghosts? Luo Wen sat on the ground, raised his head and said this sentence with a smile. Hearing this, the evil king was stunned for a short time. Ghost? He didn't give him any time to think. In the gloomy cell, the air in front of Luo Wen was distorted, and a cold air that was different from freezing hell's air conditioning appeared, covering the entire cell in an instant. One big and one small, two figures appeared out of thin air. They are all covered in white clothes, black hair splitting their faces, and gloomy. Da Sadako and Shao Sadako appear. Two ghostly ghosts appeared out of thin air. There are still prisoners in this cell, or is it something the newcomer in front of me made? The evil king's eyelids twitched slightly, and the big hand trapped in the chain suddenly took a shot after a very short pause. He doesn't care about what Luo Wen is talking about. The pirates offering a reward of 30 million or only one hand can be slapped to death. However, the palm of the evil king passed through Xiao Zhenzi's body and fell through. There is no touch of hitting, huh? Logia? The evil king's eyebrows jumped, and his other hand suddenly clenched a fist, instantly covering it with the darkness of his arms. Since it is Logia, use armed color to crack it. The dark and heavy fists swept across the side Osadako. Result, still failed. The powerful fist penetrated Dasadako's body, as if she didn't exist at all, just a phantom. Um. The evil king frowned. Armament hockey is invalid, which means it is not Logia. Is it something else? He thought in his heart, but his actions didn't stop at all. When he stepped on his foot, the cell floor rumbling and shaking, his burly and strong body leapt high, and his fist hit Luo Wen just like that. Since these two women in white are troublesome to deal with, let's get rid of Luo Wen first. Huh. Without warning. Da Zhenzi appeared in a way that was close to teleport, blocking Luo Wen and the evil king. She raised her head stiffly. Her black hair faintly saw a pair of eyes, no blood, lifeless, numb and shocking. The evil king met these eyes, his hair standing upside down. It was because these eyes did not look like a living person, but it was more because Da Sadako appeared without warning, he didn't even notice it. Nearly the ability to teleport, next moment. Osadako's pale palm shaped like a withered, stretched out and gently touched the arm of the evil king. Gah. The toothy bones twisted loudly. The arm of the evil king was touched by Da Sadako, spontaneously twisted and broken in a strange posture, and red blood spurted out. The pupils of the evil king shrank violently. He didn't even figure out how he got hurt. Is this really demon fruit power? What the hell are you guys? The wicked king was frightened, his body quickly backed away, 
his twisted arms shed a large amount of blood. He couldn't understand the methods of two women in white clothes, one big and one small, even if he had fought a powerful enemy at sea for most of his life, he hadn't encountered such a thing. They are ghosts. Luo Wen sat cross-legged on the ground, propped his chin and smiled. Ghost. Thing? The evil king's eyelids twitched. At this moment, he thought of Luo Wen's first sentence. Do you believe in ghosts? Are these two things ghosts? Only exists in the story that people turn into ghosts after death? Call. Yin wind gusts in my ears. The evil king turned his head suddenly, but saw that Xiao Zhenzi had been lying on his back without knowing when, and a pair of dead eyes was staring at him like this. A pair of pale, five thin, skinny fingers pinched toward his neck. Well, moment. The evil king was wrapped in a sense of suffocation, and the sky was spinning before his eyes. Armament Hockey blasted out like a cannonball with his fists, trying to hit Xiao Sadako who was holding him in the neck. However, it's not useful at all. The dark fist penetrated Xiao Zhenzi's body time and time again, but instead, she held the evil king's hands tighter and tighter. The pitch black palm print was deeply imprinted on the neck of the evil king, as if it was going to blend into the flesh. You. The eyes of the evil king were bloodshot, his round eyes seemed to stare out of his sockets, and there was black blood flowing out of his nose. The whole person was like a balloon on the edge of an explosion. At this moment, all the prisoners in the darkness waiting for the evil king to kill Luo Wen who watched the good show were stunned. The evil king was restrained so quickly. This is beyond everyone's expectations. I originally thought that the evil king would be a one-sided crush on the newcomer who offered a bounty of 30 million. In the end, the newcomer would only die tragically. But now it seems that these two ghost-like women appear, and the result seems to be changing. There are several abilities shown by these two ghosts. Teleportation, unable to be hit, not even armed, and powerful force that even the legendary pirate evil king can strangle to death. So many abilities are mixed together, it's not like demon fruit power at all. More importantly, everyone remembers clearly that Luo Wen and the evil king's cell are the only two of them. How did these two women appear? Ghost. Ghost. Someone frowned, observed carefully, and wanted to see what happened. There were red lights flashing in the eyes of others, and observation hockey quietly opened. Let it go, let it go. Pass me, please. The evil king had difficulty breathing and begged Luo Wen bitterly. He felt the palm of his neck like a cold iron tongs that was shrinking constantly. Occasionally, when I met Xiao Zhenzi's faintly exposed eyes between her black hair, only a piece of numbness could be seen, there was no vitality, and it didn't look like a living thing at all. If this goes on, she will really kill her, facing the evil king's begging for mercy. Luo Wen sat cross-legged on the ground, indifferent. Xiao Zhenzi's five fingers continue to exert strength. Boom. The neck of the evil king was like a leaky balloon, bursting open all of a sudden, and thick blood splashed out. The limbs that had resisted again stopped suddenly, twitching for a few seconds and then completely motionless. Patter. Xiao Zhenzi let go. The corpse of the evil king fell to the ground, his eyes widened, and black blood flowed from the seven orifices. What was even more shocking was that the skin of his whole body showed an abnormal blue-black color, unlike a person who had just died. Call. The cold wind blew by. Xiao Zhenzi and Da Zhenzi stepped back slowly and returned to Luo Wen's side, standing behind him obediently. This moment. The sixth floor eternal hell was dead, and there was no more sound. Any murderous criminal was shocked. They stared at the ghostly Sadako behind Luo Wen, and looked over and over again. Finally. Everyone's eyes fell silently on Luo Wen. Ghost. This word, time and time again, appeared in the hearts of the prisoners, impacting their worldview. The other side. The fourth layer of hot hell. Magellan in the toilet is in pain now. The diarrhea and diarrhea have not been able to get up from the toilet until now, and the body feels about to collapse. No way, he just wanted to wipe his butt, but he reached out his hand and caught it. Magellan scratched her face awkwardly. Can you encounter such unlucky things as shit and no paper? Is there anyone out there, hand me some paper. Magellan couldn't help but shouted a few words. Can be unexpected. The voice just fell. Someone really took toilet paper and passed it in through the gap under the toilet door. Thanks. Magellan hurriedly took the toilet paper, and when he was about to wipe it, his whole body was stunned. He suddenly remembered. The hand that passed the toilet paper just now, is slender and petite. It doesn't look like an adult's hand at all, child. This moment. Magellan couldn't help but think of the little girl in white that she vaguely saw in the corner of the toilet before. I have eaten too much poison recently and have hallucinations in my eyes? Magellan whispered. He shook his head, no longer thought, took the toilet paper and wiped his butt. 
impelled down the monitoring room. A group of people in charge of monitoring sat in front of the large monitoring screen, staring at the screen carefully, not missing any movement. The screen of the monitoring room is divided into many small pieces. Each small area monitors a different area. It can be said that the entire impel down is under surveillance, and there is no blind spot in the line of sight. Hanayabal swaggered into the monitoring room, sipping tea and sitting on a chair with Erlang's legs upturned. He said it was an inspection, but he actually came here to be lazy. Today's tea is good, Hanayabal murmured, shook the teacup, and glanced at the screen at will. With this sweep, he almost spilled the tea in his hand. That is a surveillance picture in the corner. The long and narrow corridor can't see the end, because it is the connection of the passage, the light is slightly weak and the picture is dark. Suddenly, the screen is a flower. A girl in white with a disheveled hair appeared out of thin air, as if teleporting from the end of a distant corridor. But just for a moment, the picture flickered, and when Hanayabal's eyes widened, there was nothing on the screen. Damn it, have you seen it, there seems to be a little girl there. Hanayabal couldn't sit still, straightened up and leaned forward, wanting to see what happened. No, deputy director. How many times have you said not to add a deputy in front? Hanayabal stopped abruptly just as he spoke. The other monitor split screen in the corner suddenly flickered again, and the screen jittered and blurred for a short time. When it calmed down, a little girl appeared again. It's just different from the previous little girl in white. This time Hanayabal saw the toilet Hanako. That is the entrance to the toilet on the fourth floor of the hot hell. Hanako's dress was stained with blood, her head was low, she couldn't see her face clearly, and she jumped out of the toilet. Compared to the little girl in white clothes before, Hanako is obviously more terrifying, and the blood on the red dress is so thick that it seems to drip down. This time, the screen flashed once again. I need to go to sleep. I may have been overworked recently. Hanayabal scratched his head, put down his teacup, patted his butt and slipped away. He decided to go back to sleep. At the same time, the sixth floor eternal hell. Luo Wen looked at the corpse of the evil Kingburst in front of him, and the system prompt sounded in his mind. Ding. Hanayabal is scared, scared point plus three, hey, unexpected joy. Suddenly, Luo Wen's inspiration flashed, and a thought came up, muttering to himself prisons, hospitals, but the most haunted places. Having said that, he instinctively glanced at the sixth layer, the meaning was obvious. I don't know what will happen to the haunted rumors of Impelled Down, the world's largest prison. Luo Wen smiled, calling Hanako and Sadako in my heart. Two ghostly figures flashed out of thin air, respectfully approached Luo Wen and listened carefully. Suddenly, a reminder sounded by Luo Wen's ear. Ding. Ace is scared, scared point plus five. Ding. Jinbei is scared, scared point plus five. Ding. The eternal hell prisoner is frightened, frightened. The scene where Luo Wen talked with Xiao Junji and Wazi was clearly seen by the pirates in the opposite cell. Among them are Jinbei and Ace. All of them frowned and clearly felt the temperature of the surrounding air drop sharply. Two ghastly ghosts, leaning towards Luo Wen, face to face, as if a ghost is killing him. Two days later, with the beginning of Luo Wen's arrangement, Impel down, some jailers and prisoners said they had seen ghosts. At this moment, the second floor wild beast hell. In a cell, when the obese prisoner saw the patrolling jailer walking past the door, he rushed forward, firmly grasping the cell railing with both hands. Damn, change me to a cell, this place is not right. Roar. The beast following the jailer grinned and stared at the fat prisoner fiercely. What are you doing? The jailer showed his unhappiness and hit the railing with an iron rod to signal the obese prisoner to retreat. Ghost. There is a ghost here. The obese prisoner showed a timid look, took two steps back, the fat all over his face was trembling. I don't know if he was scared off by the jailer, or he was scared when he recalled the herd. Lousy went to bed in the middle of the night, saw a ghost like little girl walking by the cell door, bounced and blood dripped down her body. She, she turned her head, glanced at me. At the end, the obese prisoner shivered sharply. The corners of the jailer's mouth twitched. He wanted to reprimand the prisoner telling him that there are no ghosts in the world, and impel down, as the most unbreakable prison in the world, is even more unlikely to have ghosts. But when the words came to the lips, the jailer couldn't say anything. Because. The jailer himself saw a little girl like a ghost. The jailer got up in the middle of the night to go to the toilet. The little girl's laughter suddenly came from the toilet cubicle. There is another sentence that accompanies it. Do you want to play with Hanako? The jailer who heard the voice raised his head subconsciously. But I saw a little girl with a baby head and a black face crawling on the top of the toilet, smiling at him. 
At that moment, the jailer got goosebumps all over his body, his shit stuck in half, and he crawled out of the toilet. That night, the jailer dared not sleep all night. And the jailer also heard rumors. Not only he and this prisoner, but many other prisoners and jailers have also seen ghosts, and the places where ghosts appear are not only the cells, but also the toilets, and even the torture rooms. It was late at night. When someone was patrolling past the torture room, they suddenly heard the sound of a videotape playing in the torture room, and then there was a sound like someone grinding their teeth and bone rubbing. Immediately afterwards, Sadie Chan yelled in horror, accompanied by the gloomy shrill laughter of another woman. No one knows what happened. Magellan asked Sadie Chan afterwards. Sadie Chan didn't mention a word, but kept shaking his head, which seemed to be greatly stimulated. Ghost, ghost, don't talk nonsense, there are no ghosts in this world. The jailer swallowed, ignored the obese prisoner who was about to change cells, gave him a fierce look and then turned and left. It's just. The jailer's words, no matter how you look at it, there is no confidence. The story of Impel Down being haunted intensified. Naval headquarters, where the haunted story first appeared, is even more unbalanced. On the first day after Sengoku left, those marines with ghost handprints on their wrists have been dying one after another. Those killed were all corrupt marines discovered by Luo Wen later. This really makes Garp a headache, even if he can't squat. Even if he rushed to the scene immediately after detecting the abnormality, there was still no time to save the people. When they rushed past, they were already dead. Even Vice Admiral was killed, so fast that even Garp couldn't keep up. After coming down several times, Garp made a decision. Collect all Marines with ghost handprints on them in one big room, so that as long as the ghost appears, he will be able to support him as soon as possible. At this moment, it was midnight, but Garp still did not return to his room to rest, but guarded at the door of the large room where Marine was concentrated. Sir, tomorrow is the day when the Marine martyrs pay a memorial service, do you want to go? Garp's Lieutenant Bogart stepped up and asked hesitantly. The question is like this. In fact, the naval headquarters is now full of haunts and panic, and no one dares to participate in the memorial ceremony. After all, it was a graveyard, and if it was really haunted, it would be Hiaki Yexing. Who dares to participate in this kind of time, cancel it. Garp waved his hand. At this moment, a marine courier walked over quickly and saluted in front of Garp. Garp Vice Admiral, there are people from CP0, and Charmic, the father of Saint Charles Rose, is also here. Almost the voice of the messenger had just fallen off. Under the protection of the CP personnel, Saint Roswald rushed in, screaming at Garp. What do you Marines do? My son is not well protected in naval headquarters. Waste, it's all waste. Finished. Saint Rosevard looked at the two CPOS who were responsible for protecting Saint Chalros. There are still two wastes of you. Is that how you protect my son? You too will be put to death when you return to the Holy Land. The two CP Zeros were pressed by other CP personnel, their hands were tied, and they knelt in front of St. Ra's. Beside them, there are several white suits holding pistols and pointing to their heads. As long as the Holy Rosevard ordered them to be executed. Two damn wastes, find out the reason is not, who killed my son. Rosevard's holy anger burned, everyone still did not calm down after cursing. The two CP Zeros who were tied up hesitated, and finally hesitated for a moment, and still gave out the results of the investigation. But, maybe it's, a ghost, ghost? What the hell? The kind that a person becomes after death, a ghost. Saint Rosevard was furious in an instant and threw a palm on the face of CP0 who was talking. The ghost killed my son? What are you talking about? You don't have to wait to go back to the holy land, shoot now, and kill these two rubbish who fooled me. He did not hesitate to order these two CP zeros directly. Even if the CP zero status is extremely high, you don't have to be so polite to face Marshal Marine, but in front of the Rosevard Saint, you still want to kill. Your son was indeed killed by a female ghost. At this moment, Garp suddenly said, his face a little ugly. Female ghost. Saint Roswald frowned, he wanted to scold Garp, even the Marine hero said such nonsense. At this moment, CP zero who was held in front of him hurriedly explained. My lord, the first introduction was a videotape. This CP0 tells all the reasons for the videotape. Including the female ghost will crawl out of the videotape to kill. However, Saint Roswald didn't believe it at all, and this reason was ridiculous. You really have a brain problem, dare to perfuse me like this. Rosevard's saint glanced over Garp and CP0 coldly. Since you said that the female ghost killed people through the medium of videotape, then take out the video to show me personally and I will see if the female ghost in your mouth will appear to kill me. Rosevard Saint hummed coldly, 
He had confidence in the guards and CP personnel around him, and he was even less likely to believe what Garp and CP0 said about female ghosts. To investigate this matter, the murderer of my son must be found out. Saint Roswald gave orders to the three CP0s he had brought behind him. And you, Garp, you Marine must listen to them all the way, and you must catch the murderer for me within three days and send it to me. The dignity of celestial dragons cannot be desecrated. What bullshit are you talking about? Garp unceremoniously returned after hearing this. These idiot celestial dragons will only add to the chaos. Garp is really annoying. Garp, do you want to die? Sage Rosevard burst into anger instantly, pointing at Garp and yelling, Don't think that you are a marine hero and you can dare to be disrespectful to celestial dragons. Anyone who disobeys celestial dragons will die. Come here, tie him up, holy wrath of Roswald ordered. However, the few CP zeros he brought, no one moved for the time being. My lord, Garp has an extraordinary position in Marine, and Master Five Elders means, temporarily unable to move. One of the CP0 came up and whispered in the ear of Rosevard. What? Saint Rosevard heard the words Five Elders, his arrogance visibly weakened, but he soon felt ashamed and blushed and waved. Stop talking nonsense, in short, Marine must cooperate to find the murderer. Although Rosevard Saint still insisted, he did not continue to mention the victory of Garp. Garp frowned but said nothing more. The adjutant Bogart next to him changed his face several times, and finally did not argue about Marine's obedience to the dispatch, but brought up another matter. Master Roswald, you really, want to watch the video? What I said, do I need to repeat it a second time? Saint Roswald frowned. But, Bogart wanted to persuade him, but Garp suddenly interrupted. Go and get the videotape. Garp knows that with Celestial Dragon's character, as long as it is spoken, it must be done by someone. From the perspective of St. Roswald, the videotape is totally nonsense. Although he will be dangerous after watching it, if he doesn't show it to him, I'm afraid this matter will not end today. In a way, an unreasonable celestial dragons is more a headache than a murderous ghost. Soon. The videotape was taken by Bogart and sent to St. Ros. St. Ros didn't believe in evil at all, and turned on the projection phone bug on the spot and watched the entire videotape. Except for the weird picture, St. Roswald didn't feel anything turned his head back to the bedroom specially prepared by Marine and fell asleep. One night passed. Nothing happened. Garp, I knew you guys were talking nonsense, what a shit girl, what a ghost. Saint Roswald scolded Garp early in the morning, venting his own grievances and anger. Garp didn't care, but just asked casually, do you have a handprint on your body? Um? Rosd stupefied, raised his hand subconsciously. I saw on the wrist, there is really a blue-black female handprint. What is this? Saint Roswald shook his arm vigorously, but he couldn't get rid of the black handprints. It was useless to call several maids to wipe them with wet towels. Waste, all waste. The Rosevard Saint Sereni cursed a few words. Then, with his hands on his back, walked over in the living room. He was really a little scared. But it wasn't that he was scared by the ghost's claims, Rosevard Saint didn't believe in ghosts from beginning to end. From the perspective of Saint Rosevard, this is something someone sneaked into him last night and did something to him. There is a strong man who can ignore the defense of naval headquarters, and the CP agency's investigation sneaks into his side. Saint Rosevard was afraid that he would really be killed. He didn't trust Garp to protect himself. I want to go back to the Holy Land. Only Marie Joyce can be safe enough. Saint Roswald's face was ugly. Bring my son's body here, I'm going to see now. He spoke quickly, with cold sweat dripping from his forehead, and he was eager to leave here. You have ghost mudra on your body now. Anyone who has ghost mudra will be the target of female ghost killing. It is not safe to leave now. Garp wants to stop. He is now gathering people with ghost handprints. If Rosevard Saint leaves now, he will be a fish slipping through the net. It's not easy to protect, but it will be more troublesome to catch a female ghost. What the hell is it? Don't talk nonsense here. It's definitely a powerful demon fruit power. Don't make excuses for your incompetence. Where does the Rosed Saint listen to Garp? Throw the videotape to CP0 at will, and instruct the next person to pack up and leave immediately. Soon, the CP personnel brought the body of Saint Charos, Rosevard Saint Horse ran to the port nonstop, and the big ship of the world government set sail and was about to leave. Garp Vice Admiral, what should I do? The flying squirrel Vice Admiral's eyelids twitched, and he followed Garp to witness the whole process. Now Rosevard's position is in chaos, and if he leaves like this, something may really happen. No one knows whether that female ghost will find Saint Rosevar, let alone when she will find Saint Rosevar. Let him, he wants to die, we can't stop it. Garp's face is also ugly. 
so he doesn't like celestial dragons, a bunch of idiots, and can't do anything but mess up. By the way, tell Sengoku about this, otherwise the guy Sengoku will scold again. Garp looked at the big world government ship that was already sailing, turned his head and ordered the adjutant Bogart. Boga nodded and went to do it immediately, now. The big ship of the world government has already pulled out of the port and headed for the Blue Sea. What no one found out was, in the chest of the sun's relics packed by Saint Rosevard. There was a sudden flash in the clothes and objects, as if from imaginary to real. A videotape appeared slowly, lying quietly among the clothes. At the same time that the world's politically dominant ship sailed back to Marie Joy's. Impel down. In the sixth floor eternal hell. It must be very interesting that the holy land is haunted. How many celestial dragons are going to die this time? Through Genzi, Luo Wen sees the way of Saint Rosevard. It can only be said that people can't stop them if they want to die. He smiled. Look at Xiao Zhenzi in her arms. At this time, Xiao Zhenzi sat on Luo Wen's lap, her feet dangling lightly under her white dress, her bare skin looked strangely white, and she looked very cute. If Luo Wen and Xiao Zhenzi are now on the benches in the courtyard in the afternoon, it will really be a harmonious and warm picture. But the reality is a dark and depressed cell, and even Xiao Zhenzi is still playing with a bloody arm in his hand. There is no cuteness, only horror and horror. Xiao Junji, you have something to do. Luo Wen rubbed Xiao Zhenzi's head lightly. She raised her head, her eyes under her black hair blinking. Marie Joy over there, Luo Wen whispered. He wants to send Xiao Junji to the holy place of celestial dragons, Marie Joy's. Luo Wen knows that Xiao Zhenzi's strength is more terrifying than Da Zhenzi, and his methods are even more bizarre. It will definitely bring unprecedented impact to the holy land, Marie Joy's. The haunting of naval headquarters is handed over to Sadako, Marie Joy's I will leave it to you, Sadako. Master, I will definitely manage it. Xiao Zhenzi jumped off Luo Wen's legs and nodded obediently. Then, she walked to the dark corner of the prison cell, as if melting into the darkness, and disappeared in the blink of an eye. Luo Wen knows. Xiao Junji has followed the medium of videotape to Marie Joy's, the holy land of celestial dragons. Just then, ding, guard Edgar is frightened, fright point plus one. Luo Wen smiled. Recently, I often hear the prompt tone. I think it was a certain impel down who was frightened by Hanako in the toilet again. Luo Wen ignored it and called out the system panel. Host. Luo Wen. Strength. A reward of 55 million yuan. Do not use the strength of the ghost ability. Ghost. Sadako and Hanako in the toilet. Scare points, 560. Props. Videotape in the past two days, the number of shock points has increased by more than 200, and 500 points have been saved, and it is time to draw. And through these two days of exercise, Luo Wen's own strength has also grown to 55 million. This once again made Luo Wen sigh about the pervert of Saitama's physique. After two days of exercise, he can increase his combat power by 20 million. Let's draw. Luo Wen retracted his thoughts and said to the system from the bottom of his heart. Ding. Consumption of scary points, draw a lottery. Ding. In this lottery, the ghost, Bachi Sama, was awarded. Um? Luo Wen was taken aback. Lord Bachi? Legend has it that she is a tall female ghost wearing a white dress, will make a masculine popopo -po -po laugh, and imitate the voice of the deceased's relatives, letting people relax their vigilance. Hum. Luo Wen remembered that he once accidentally read Master Ba Qi's book. The most impressive thing is, it's so big. With the idea of, finding out, Luo Wen summoned Lord Ba Kai. Call, the wind blows. A tall female figure appeared out of thin air in front of Luo Wen. She was wearing a white dress and a sun hat, her face was hidden and she couldn't really see it. But what Luo Wen wants to say is, it's really big. The book is not a lie. I have seen the master. Master Ba Kai bends gracefully, his heavy chest trembling. Imper Down has Hanako, Naval Headquarters has Sadako, Marie Joyce has Sadako, where should I send you? Luo Wen touched his chin and muttered to herself. With the movement of these days, Luo Wen has a plan in mind. He wants to make every famous place in the world a haunted place. Impel Down, Naval Headquarters, Holy Land Marie Joyce are already influencing. Besides, which one should I choose for the next location, Impel Down, Naval Headquarters, Holy Land Marie Joyce, these places are still too tight, even if it's haunted, it's hard to spread, and it's quickly blocked, and there are too few scares. It must be a place that is easy to spread, there is it. There was a flash of light in Luo Wen's mind. A figure of a fat ant emerged. Master Hachichi, Cake Island is handed over to you. 
Luo Wen raised his head and looked at the tall and big, Bakai adults, and said with a chuckle. The voice fell. Master Bachi nodded lightly, the sound of high heels stepping on the ground sounded one after another, and she walked into the darkness, and a gust of wind blew past and disappeared. Luo Wen continued to exercise after ordering the eight chief recognition. Although restrained by chains and shackles, Luo Wen has not yet reached the point where he cannot move. With Saitama's physique, he can quickly become stronger with a simple exercise. At the same time, on the other side, the fourth hot hell, Magellan's office. Another resignation letter. Magellan stared at the resignation letters piled up on his desk. Recently, Impel Down has become more and more haunted, many guards have died, and everyone involved is panicked. There have been rumors secretly spreading that the root cause of Impel Down's haunting is that too many prisoners are tortured here, and the accumulated resentment has turned into ghosts. That ghost must be caught, otherwise it's so troublesome, and sooner or later Impel Down will happen. Magellan frowned. The reason why Impel Down is a copper wall and an iron wall is that apart from the accident that the location and defense facilities are strong enough, there are also jailers who have one mind. If the jailer is in a mess, it will have a big impact on Impel Down's guard work. Guru. Halfway through, Magellan's stomach hurts again. Be prepared tonight, stay with that little girl when you shit. Magellan said firmly while clutching his stomach. He also noticed that something was wrong, and there seemed to be something really lingering in the toilets of Impel Down. The last time I gave myself paper was probably. The corners of Magellan's mouth twitched when he thought of this. He wiped his butt with the paper that the ghost handed him. Your butt won't rot, will it? There was no chance for Magellan to think about it. Hanayabal suddenly walked in. Hey hello, Magellan, do you have a stomachache? Marshal Marine Sengoku is here. I'll go after shit, you go to meet Marshal Sengoku, take him to my office first. After Magellan said this, he grabbed the toilet paper on the table clutched his stomach and ran to the toilet. Wait for Magellan to get comfortable and finish shit. Sangoku has arrived at the office and waited. Marshal Sangoku, did naval headquarters catch the ghost that killed celestial dragons? Magellan immediately asked when he saw that everyone around him had left the office, leaving only Sangoku and himself. No, Sangoku shook his head and told Magellan about the recent haunting of naval headquarters. After talking about the situation, Sangoku immediately asked Magellan. Director Magellan, I heard from Deputy Director Hanayabal, Impel Down also happened recently? Sangoku frowned and walked all the way, and Hanayabal, who greeted him, raised several rumors of Impel Down on the way. Hanayabal said these words without obstruction, and always gave Sangoku an illusion. Hanayabal. Seems to be throwing the pot at Magellan? And also gloating, as if wishing Magellan to get out. Magellan, who didn't know anything about it, nodded, without concealing it. Actually, Impel Down is also haunted. There is a slight pause. Magellan sorted out his words and told some strange things about Impel Down recently. Anyway, everything is wrong. Sangoku frowned upon hearing this. This matter, I am afraid it has something to do with Luo Wen. After listening to Magellan's words, Sangoku was more certain of this idea. This is a coincidence. When Luo Wen sent the videotape over, naval headquarters was haunted, and all the people involved in the accident were implicated in the videotape. Luo Wen entered Impel Down, and Impel Down was also haunted. No matter how you look at this Luo Wen, nothing is right. Luo Wen. Magellan's eyes flickered. He had already thought in his heart that Luo Wen had some connection with the haunting, otherwise Luo Wen would not be imprisoned on the sixth floor. It's just that Magellan never went to Luo Wen. First, he knew that Sengoku was coming, and second, because many things were uncertain, it was not a good thing to act rashly. After all, this is related to ghosts that represent the unknown, so it's always right to be careful. It's not too late, let's find Luo Wen together, and I will show you the way. Magellan got up and immediately took Sengoku to the sixth floor eternal hell. Impel down, the sixth floor eternal hell. The prison where no outsider has come all the year round, because of the arrival of Sengoku, it boils in an instant. In the dark, the chain collision sounded one after another, and a pair of eyes opened to look at Sengoku, and the eyes of a prisoner suddenly became red. Sangoku, it's you. The red-eyed prisoner clung to the iron railing tightly and pressed his face to the front door of the cell, as if to see Sangoku's face clearly. He remembers clearly that he was defeated by Marine in the ocean and was captured by Marshal Marine. Too many people are crazy. Many of the prisoners in Eternal Hell were defeated by Sangoku. They are now imprisoned and will never see the sun they can't wait to rush out and tear Sangoku to pieces. Like a real murderous turmoil, the entire Eternal Hell was in chaos. Some people are crazy about the arrival of Sengoku, and some people are surprised and curious about it. 
It was Ace and Jinbei, who also raised their heads and looked at Sengoku with a difference in their eyes. Isn't this Sengoku? You will come, who are you looking for? Chote tilted his head and grinned openly, while saying this sentence. Chote looked at Ace vaguely, he wondered if Sengoku came to find Ace on purpose. Chote knows a little about Ace and knows that Ace was caught recently, he is the captain of the second division of the Whitebeard Pirates and has a heavy weight. Sengoku wants to pry out the secret of the Whitebeard Pirates from Ace's mouth. At this moment, it is not only Chout who is thinking this way, but many prisoners in Eternal Hell are also guessing like this. However, Sengoku passed Ace's cell without stopping. Under everyone's surprised eyes, Sengoku walked to Luo Wen's cell. Is he here to find Luo Wen? The prisoners who saw this scene were all stunned. This guy is really offering a 30 million bounty? The corners of Chote's mouth twitched, is this a joke, a prisoner with a bounty of 30 million, is it worth letting Marshal Marine come in person? Hanai Bao, that idiot, isn't he kidding us? The prisoners in the dark looked at each other. Everyone was suspicious. He could kill the evil king and let Marshal Marine come personally. It didn't look like the bounty was only 30 million. This made more prisoners curious, and even secretly guessed Luo Wen's real reward. 300 million. 1.3 billion. Or higher. Hey, Marshal Sengoku is coming here. If you miss out, come in and sit down. The home is simple, don't mind. Luo Wen in the cell, seeing Sengoku's arrival, got up with a smile, saying that his host was welcoming people to be a guest. After Sengoku saw the scene inside Luo Wen's cell clearly, his eyelids twitched slightly, and he said silently. You are already considered luxurious. With that, Sengoku looked at Magellan subconsciously, not laughing or crying. Magellan, I want you to pay attention to Luo Wen, are you too careful? Luo Wen's cell is much more luxurious than other cells. There are large soft rooms, comfortable tables and chairs, and all kinds of food on the table. The most incredible thing is that there is a landscape painting for viewing on the wall, and the bed is covered with soft quilts. At this moment, Sengoku looked at Magellan's eyes, as if to say. Are you kidding me, this is a cell? This. Magellan scratched her cheek awkwardly under Sengoku's gaze. I didn't let Hanai Bao do this, he didn't know what was going on, why Luo Wen's cell was so luxurious. Where is the jail? It's almost the same as a holiday in jail. What Magellan didn't know was, these are the various objects Xiao Junji and Hanako brought to Luo Wen while haunting him fell down. In their view, the owner is noble, how can you live in such a poor environment, even if the owner does not order, you must decorate it well. One come and two. Luo Wen's cell has become what it is now. Magellan had just finished talking here, and suddenly noticed something wrong. He remembered that in Luo Wen's cell, besides Luo Wen, there was also a villainous king. But now, the evil king is gone. Hanayabal quickly scanned the other cells. However, he did not see the figure of the evil king. The evil king did not change his cell, but really disappeared. What did you do to Abalo Pizarro, the evil king, what about the others? Magellan immediately took a step forward and asked Luo Wen. What did you do to Abaro Pizarro? What about others? Magellan frowned and stared at Luo Wen in the cell. What's wrong? Alongside, Sangoku saw Magellan's behavior and his face was puzzled. Magellan didn't conceal it, telling the story of the evil king. Hear the words. Sangoku's pupils shrank. He knows who the evil king is. The murderous criminal who committed heinous crimes was once one of the most terrifying criminals in the world but was eventually arrested by the world government and sentenced to life imprisonment, erasing it from history. Now Sengoku remembers that when the evil king was arrested, he went crazy and wiped out a country on the coast. But now the evil king who was in a cell with Luo Wen is gone. When NPC evaporates, it is impossible to escape from prison. Then it seems that there is only one possibility left. Luo Wen killed the evil king, and the handling of the corpse was silent. What did you do to Abaro Pizarro? Sangoku inhales slightly and asks the question again. He wants to kill me. Luo Wen answered truthfully, only saying such a word. But the meaning is already obvious. The evil king wanted to kill me, so I killed him. Sangoku and Magellan looked at each other, and both fell silent. Luo Wen's answer is in line with the status of a prison inmate, and he doesn't say much about it. But the problem is that it's not right now. Both Sangoku and Magellan know. This guy has a big gap with the evil king. You must know that the evil king is a legendary pirate, and Luo Wen only offered a reward of 30 million when he went to prison. Did Luo Wen hide his strength? Sengoku and Magellan frowned, wondering in their hearts. However, Magellan shook his head quickly. Forget it, now is not the time to consider these issues. 
He turned his head, looked at the guard who followed, and ordered. Go and clean up everything in him. Although Magellan doesn't know exactly what the furnishings and furniture in Luo Wen's room are, it doesn't look like a prisoner should be treated now. Soon. The cell door was open. While the guard went to move the furniture out, Sengoku and Magellan walked in and stood in front of Luo Wen. Luo Wen, you know what I am doing here, let's talk about it, what is the purpose of the video you gave me? Sengoku squinted his eyes and looked at Luo Wen. This is the first time he has met Luo Wen. The purpose I told the Flying Squirrel Vice Admiral to help you deal with pirates, because I also hate pirates. Luo Wen smiled and spread his hands, because of his movements, the chains on his body collided with the shackles. Do you think I will believe it? Sengoku narrowed his eyes. He would not believe Luo Wen's words, what a pirate gave Marine to deal with the pirate. What's more, because of Luo Wen's videotape, naval headquarters is now in chaos and died, not to mention Marine, and Celestial Dragons. Luo Wen ignored Sengoku, speaking as if he was self-conscious. Once upon a time, there was a woman named Sadako. Luo Wen's voice is low and slowly tells the story of Zhenzi's transformation from a human to a ghost. Sadako is a schizophrenic patient, and her schizophrenia has produced a big Sadako and a small Sadako. After Sadako's two personalities recombined, she killed all those who harmed her uncontrollably. After that, Sadako's father found Sadako, injected Sadako with smallpox virus, and threw it into the dry well. Of course, when Luo Wen said these words, he changed the name of smallpox virus to suit the world of One Piece. Sadako who was thrown into the well died in the end. Her resentment stayed in this world and became a ghost. Sadako's resentment resides on the videotape. From then on, anyone who watches the video will be targeted and killed by Sadako. In the end, Luo Wen's voice echoed in the dark cell, and combined with the story he told, it gave people an inexplicable sense of depression. It seems to have witnessed Sadako's life, from human to ghost. Sadako you were talking about. Is that woman in white? Sengoku frowned and quickly connected the two together. Luo Wen smiled and nodded. No, if the woman in white is Sadako, what good will it do for you to spread the video? There was a glimmer of light in Sengoku's eyes. How could it be no good? I said, I will help you deal with pirates. I also hate pirates. If you show the video to the pirates, Sadako will deal with them. I am not afraid of being targeted. Anyway, the video is your marine. Spread, it's not me, can kill pirates, do good deeds, and don't worry about being retaliated. It's killing two birds with one stone. Luo Wen smiled. After listening to Luo Wen's words, Sangoku thought a lot at this moment. The videotape sent by Luo Wen really caused chaos in the headquarters and killed people. But if you really follow Luo Wen's words, spreading Sadako's video will be able to deal with the pirates. This is great news for Marine. Sangoku experienced that night of shock himself, he knew exactly how terrifying Sadako was. If Sadako is really allowed to go to the pirates' territory, Sangoku has to think about how many pirate groups can handle this entire sea. But what good is this for Luo Wen? Is it really like what he said, want to do good? Sangoku looked at Luo Wen suspiciously. You never thought about using videotapes to make deals with us, such as releasing you impel down. Although I can tell you responsibly, I won't let you out. Why should I go out, isn't it nice here? Luo Wen grinned and said with an indifferent appearance, as if this prison was really a very good place for him. When Magellan heard this, he was speechless, and subconsciously looked at the pieces of furniture moved out by the guards. If others say this, Magellan wants to refute, how could Impel Down be good? This is the hell of criminals. It can be placed here, it seems that there is nothing wrong with it. He had a very good life in prison, and he didn't suffer any crimes at all. On the other hand, Sangoku didn't believe Luo Wen's words in his heart, but Luo Wen couldn't refute what Luo Wen said. He also didn't want to continue to talk about this topic. Immediately, the conversation turned and asked again. Also, why do you know this? What is your relationship with that Sadako? Sangoku stroked his chin. What Luo Wen said is the Tao, and even knows Zhenzi's origin, as if he really witnessed the process of Zhenzi's transformation from a human to a ghost. It goes without saying that of course I am close to Zhenzi. If not, how can I know this? Luo Wen was still laughing, and the tone of answer was very relaxed. So what's your relationship with Sadako? Sangoku frowned. He found that Luo Wen didn't give a clue when he spoke, and liked to disturb his sight. Father daughter relationship, Luo Wen said seriously. This kind of joke is not funny. Sengoku has the urge to kill Luo Wen. The nonsense that this guy showed is so unclear which sentence he said is true and which sentence is false, which is unpredictable. Luo Wen smiled, spread his hands, and put on a sincere tone of honest answer. 
she is my ex-girlfriend. The corners of Sengoku's mouth twitched, although it still sounded weird. But this answer. More reliable than before. It's just that he doesn't know whether he should believe Luo Wen's words, this guy is too troublesome, and Feng doesn't know what part of his words are true. But one thing is certain, what Luo Wen said about the videotape is true. Those who have watched the video will be targeted by Sadako, which has taken several lives to confirm. If you watch the video, you will be spotted and killed. Sangoku has a headache for this. Luo Wen said very well, show the pirate the videotape, and kill the pirate through the hands of Sadako. But the problem is like a sharp sword without a scabbard, maybe even oneself will be stabbed to death. If she is really resentful after death, how can she avoid dying after watching the tape? Sangoku asked this question. This is the crux of the problem. Only with restraint, can this sharp sword be sheathed and unsheathed when it is time to be unsheathed. Do not know. Luo Wen smiled and shrugged. My ex-girlfriend is dead as a ghost, how can I know how to solve the videotape problem from the ghost's mouth? Luo Wen naturally wouldn't tell Sengoku that people who have watched the videotape can avoid the ghost killing by showing the videotape to others within seven days. If you say so, then there is no scare point to earn. However, Luo Wen believes that with the IQ of the Marine Marshal and the resourceful General Sengoku, he will soon follow the path and find a solution. But it doesn't matter. It is enough for Luo Wen to earn a scare point. After all, there is more than Sengoku that can give him wool. When the other party finds a way to crack it, just change another one. Sengoku glanced deeply at Luo Wen. Do not know? Still don't want to say? Sengoku didn't ask much, no matter what the reason, he couldn't get the answer he wanted from Luo Wen today. Magellan glanced at Luo Wen and suddenly said. What does the ghost kid in the toilet have to do with you? What? Hearing that, Luo Wen tilted his head, as if he didn't know what you were talking about. Magellan frowned. He saw that Luo Wen's expression did not seem to be false. But after the naval headquarters was haunted by Luo Wen's videotape, Impel Down soon became haunted. It is difficult for people not to connect the two. But the problem is that there is no evidence for such things as ghosts, and it is really unbelievable to say that one person can control two ghosts. This problem can only be left to nothing. Subsequently, Sangoku asked Luo Wen a few more questions, and it didn't take long for him to leave. Before leaving, Sangoku let him go. Luo Wen, I kindly advise you, no matter what your purpose is, if you really know how to solve the videotape, tell me, don't think of using this as a bargaining chip to let you out. Let me tell you, if it was before the videotape was sent, I might consider letting you out, but it won't work anymore. Because of your videotape, you killed the celestial dragons, it is impossible for celestial dragons to agree to let you out, or even execute you. In order for you to survive, you should tell me the videotape solution so that I can still use it, help you save your life. After Sengoku said this, he turned and left. Originally, the death of celestial dragons needed to be kept secret. But Sengoku still told Luo Wen. He doesn't think there is anything, now he just wants to know the solution to the videotape. The voice echoed in the empty cell. Sengoku and Magellan left. The cell door was locked again. Luo Wen looked at where they left and smiled without much care. Compared to Sengoku's words, he was more concerned that the furniture in his cell was gone. But. This is nothing, if you want it, within an hour, the cell will become the original layout again. Your name is Luo Wen, right? Just then. In the cell next door to Luo Wen, a prisoner leaned over, stuck it on the iron railing, looked at Luo Wen curiously, and asked aloud. What did Sengoku tell you? Why do they always come to you? The words came out. Many figures in the darkness raised their heads and looked at Luo Wen curiously, waiting for his answer, including Ace and Jinbei. Even, in the depths of eternal hell, in a separate cell. A pair of scarlet eyes suddenly opened, the chain sounded one after another. This is an old figure whose whole body is trapped by chains. Although he is bound by chains and in prison, he is still noble and calm, like an elderly gentleman. At this moment, this old figure is also watching Luo Wen. The most terrifying thing is, just this old man, opening his eyes, made the noise of the surrounding cells weaken instantly, it seems that these eternal hell evil spirits are all afraid of this old man. The conversation between Sengoku and Luo Wen was deliberately cut off from the voice, and it was not transmitted to other cells, and no one else knew it. Do you want to know? Facing the sight in the dark, Luo Wen smiled and asked. The prisoners did not deny, all nodded, expressing their curiosity. They were all powerful pirates, and they didn't intend to hide their intentions. Come on, we are all curious. Guy Taran Daime, who looks coquettish, looks like a woman, and looks like a man, looks over and urges. Hear the words. Luo Wen pointed to his side. Huh. 
Without warning, Osadako appears. The surrounding temperature dropped suddenly, and the inside of the cell was ghostly and terrifying. Luo Wen pointed to Da Zhenzi and said, In fact, it's nothing. My ex-girlfriend was at naval headquarters a few days ago. While Garp and Sengoku were inattentive, they killed celestial dragons. Sengoku came over and asked me how to solve my ex-girlfriend. The cell was quiet in an instant, are you kidding me? Dai Mei, who asked the first question, had a strange face. Ha ha ha, this guy is so funny. Ace laughed. If his hands hadn't been tied up, he would have covered his stomach and laughed. If you want to lie to us, you should make up a reasonable one. Naval headquarters killed celestial dragons or killed it when Sengoku and Garp were there. Is this possible? A guy full of nonsense. Some people in the dark looked unsightly, thinking that Luo Wen was playing with them, but when he thought about the fate of the evil king, and seeing the Dazenzi next to Luo Wen, some excessive remarks, they finally failed to say it. At the same time, the old figure stretched out by eternal hell closed his eyes again after Luo Wen finished saying this. It seems that he fell into dormancy again. At the same time, Sangoku and Magellan, who had already left eternal hell, walked into the ascending elevator. Sangoku, do you think Luo Wen's words are credible? Magellan asked. I can't believe it all, and I can't not believe it. His words are true and false, and he is more difficult to deal with than I thought. At this point Sangoku said, the elevator stopped and the door opened. As he walked out of the elevator door, he added. This guy's bounty shouldn't be 30 million, hear the words. Magellan nodded nonchalantly. Not to mention that Luo Wen could kill the evil king, but with his videotape, he killed the celestial dragons after being spread to naval headquarters. With this alone, Luo Wen's bounty started at least 500 million. An underrated guy, Magellan muttered softly. At this time, Sangoku, who was walking in front, suddenly turned around, looked at Magellan and asked. By the way, you said Impel Down was haunted, what are you going to do with it? Sangoku said this with a serious expression. Impel Down appears haunted, which is more important than naval headquarters in a sense. Because the prisoners here are all prisoners, once the haunting intensified, the prison made mistakes and allowed the prisoners to escape, especially the bastards who hadn't seen the sky on the sixth floor. Eternal Hell escaped. The consequences of this are disastrous, I am afraid it is more serious than haunting. This matter, in Sengoku's view, must be resolved as soon as possible. I plan to squat in the toilet and catch the ghost girl who haunted the toilet. Magellan said his plan, he also attaches great importance to this matter. Me and you together. Sangoku heard the words and nodded lightly. He intends to stay here for the time being, help Magellan catch ghosts together and solve the problem of Impel Down. At the same time, Sangoku also cares about Luo Wen, because he knows that if a Celestial Dragons is dead, CP0 will definitely come to Luo Wen. With the character of those people, they will definitely be sentenced to get out of the way. Luo Wen can't die yet. The mystery of the videotape has not been solved yet. Thinking of the death of St. Charles Rose at naval headquarters, Sengoku had a splitting headache and had to raise his hand to rub his temple. He thought of Garp calling the worm today to talk about it. St. Rosd also watched the video, I hope nothing happens. The big ship of the world government, sailing at full speed, returned to the Holy Land Marie Joyce in the shortest time. St. Roswald disembarked, got on the sedan chair lifted by the servant, and swaggered back to the castle. After a while, news came from five elders. Five elders are going to summon St. Rosevard. Immediately, St. Rosevard put down the things in his hands and ordered his servants to deal with his son's relics, and he went to the center of Marie Joyce as quickly as possible. The place where five elders are located. This is a luxurious and quiet bungalow, known as the right place. Master Five Elders. St. Roswald bowed his head slightly when he saw five elders. Even though Rosevard's saint is the celestial dragons of the world's noblemen, he still needs enough respect in front of the five elders at the pinnacle of power. Have you found any results? Five elders, blonde and blue-eyed in a red suit, sat on the sofa, with Erlang's legs tilted, looking towards the Saint Roswald. My son. Rosevard's expression was gloomy, and he told about what happened in the headquarters. Including the videotape and the female ghost statement given by Marine. Marine's gang of trash can't catch the murderer. The ghost pulled out a video to shirk responsibility, and even said that female ghosts harmed people. They are all trash. When Saint Rosevard said this, his face flushed and he was very angry. Videotape? The blonde five elders frowned upon hearing this. Then. He looked at CP0 who was following Saint Roswald, and said. You can get a detailed report on this matter. The blonde five elders changed positions and took a sip from the teacup on the table. Also, 
bring up the detailed information of Luo Wen for Marine's videotape, and find out his details within one day, no matter what the details are. Yes, my lord. CP0 nodded and resigned respectfully. Luo Wen. A name I haven't heard of. Sitting on the sofa, five elders, with a long beard, opened his slightly closed eyes and whispered softly. The other side. CP0, who was packing up the relics of St. Chalros, suddenly found a videotape in St. Chalros' clothes. Videotape? CP0 was stunned. He always stayed in the Holy Land Marie Joys and did not follow the Rosevard Saint to the naval headquarters. Naturally, he didn't know anything about the videotape. Following the CP0 of St. Rosevard, he is still busy in the headquarters to investigate the truth about the death of St. Rose. Just then, there was a respectful voice from outside the door. Meet Master Fitchler. CP0 heard the sound and looked back. However, the young celestial dragons with their braids upright came slowly in the sedan chair lifted by eight servants. Isn't Saint Uncle Roswald out there? Saint Fitchel looked around the situation inside the house. Although celestial dragons are nobles in the world, it does not mean that they are a whole. They are also divided into various families. The family of Saint Rosevard has died, and celestial dragons of other families are also rushing over one after another to attend the funeral of Saint Charles. However, the funeral of celestial dragons is much more luxurious and grand than the outside world. Master Fitchel, Master Roswald went to Master Five Elders. CP0 bowed his head to Saint Charmic and said respectfully. Hey, I didn't expect Saint Charles Rose to die like this. Saint Fitchel shook his head, his expression a little dim. He has a very good relationship with Charles Rose Saint. The two are partners who have played together. Even one of Charles Rose Saint's thirteen wives was picked by Fitchel Saint. The next moment, Saint Fitchel looked at CP0, his expression suddenly changed. This is the incompetence of Marine, but also the incompetence of your CP organization. The Saint Charles Roth you protected is dead. Are you still in the mood to watch the video here? Master Fitchel, not what you think. This is the relic of Master Chalros. When CP0 heard this, he knelt down on one knee and hurriedly explained. Is it a relic of Saint Charles Roth? Saint Fitchel heard these words, his face suddenly eased. Since it is the relic of St. Charles Rose, it should be a very important thing to him. St. Fitchel raised his hand, and the people around him understood, took the videotape from CP0, and handed it to Fitchel Saint for inspection. I took the videotape. I want to see the last thing he left in this world. St. Fitchel seemed to recall the previous life with St. Charles Rose, feeling a little sad for a while. The next day, the funeral of St. Charles Roth was held as scheduled. Marie Joy is covered with white flowers, and there is a sorrowful atmosphere throughout the holy place to mourn St. Charles Rose. Now, Chalulia Palace, who attended the funeral of her brother, explained the cause of her brother's death to the celestial dragons present. At the end, her expression was obviously agitated, and she shouted angrily. Marine is too perfunctory. He actually said that a videotape killed my brother. People who wanted me to watch the entire naval headquarters should be executed because they were lying. My father watched the videotape and nothing happened. What? Saint Charles Rose. Died because he watched the tape. Celestial Dragons had a strange face when he heard the news for the first time, and it didn't seem like a qualified reason at all. Naval headquarters dare to use this reason to prevaricate them Celestial Dragons? At the thought of this, many Celestial Dragons present turned ugly. Damn Marine, not only didn't protect Saint Charles, but also tried to lie to them, it's a damn sin. Wait, videotape? At this moment, Saint Fitchell stood up and took out the videotape from his pocket. Isn't it this videotape? I just watched it yesterday. Saint Fitchell had a strange expression. Yesterday when he was watching the videotape, he felt very strange. A woman in white climbed out of the well, and he looked terrified. At that time, he was still wondering how Saint Charles might like this kind of thing. What's in it? Young celestial dragons approached around and asked curiously. A woman crawled out of the well. Saint Fitchell didn't know how to describe it. Huh woman. Well, the young celestial dragons was taken aback, and immediately asked, are you okay? Have you encountered any problems? No, Saint Fitchel shook his head. Except for the strange picture, he was taken aback by surprise, he did not encounter any danger. If it's not dangerous, show me too. Upon hearing this, the young celestial dragons wanted to see it, but couldn't hide the curiosity in his heart. It feels like it's very interesting, and Fitchel Saint let us take a look. Quickly, let us see. Marine's group of people really have a problem with their brains, they dare to use this kind of reason to talk nonsense. Other celestial dragons also followed suit, wanting to see the contents of the videotape. I also want to see if Marine is really talking nonsense, I think Sengoku can be executed. 
Among the people attending the funeral, Kama El Sheng, who has a blue nose, also roared. Yes, Marine must be lying, they are damned. Another celestial dragons echoed. Okay, let's watch it again together. After hesitating for a while, Saint Fitchler nodded and ordered the next person to prepare to play the videotape on the spot. At the same time the other side, Luo Wen, who is in eternal hell, looks weird. No matter which world you are in, there are a lot of people who die. Luo Wen couldn't help but complain, he really didn't expect it. These idiot celestial dragons can die to such an extent. At the request of many celestial dragons, the videotape played smoothly. Just as the videotape was about to end, Saint Roswald rushed to the funeral and witnessed the moment Sadako crawled out of the well. Videotape. Impossible. I sent the videotape to CP0 for investigation and didn't bring it back to the Holy Land. Saint Roswald has a strange face. He took several CP0s to naval headquarters at the time, and left a few CP0s when he left, and also gave the videotape to CP0 who stayed in the headquarters to investigate the murderer. But now, how could the videotape appear at the funeral of his son? There is doubt in the sacred heart of Roswald. But when I thought that the funeral was about to begin, and I didn't have a shit when I watched the tape. Suddenly it doesn't matter. On the other side, Saint Fitchell, who had just watched the videotape, got up and asked as soon as he saw Saint Roswald's arrival. Holy Uncle Roswald, I heard from Charulia Palace that you also watched this videotape? Right. Saint Roswald nodded. Sure enough, you watched it all right, and we watched it all right. Saint Fitchell slapped his thigh. Marine's trash is really perfunctory. I can't do anything at all and I don't know what to eat. As soon as these words came out, the celestial dragons present screamed and clamored continuously. Replace Sengoku, such idiots are not qualified to continue to sit in the position of Marine Marshal, and those Marines who participated in this investigation are all suspended, and they must be punished. That's right, I don't see it as suspension. It's good to put these wastes to death. There is no way to protect St. Charles Rose. Too many celestial dragons were talking. Everyone watched the tape, nothing happened at all, and the words were full of disdain and mockery of Marine. The videotape is just an episode of a funeral. After Celestial Dragons watched it, they left it behind. Soon, the funeral of St. Charles Rose was held as scheduled. That night, another place in the Holy Land Marie Joys. The office of the army commander Kong, now. Holding a phone worm in his empty hand, he is talking to Sengoku who is far away from impelled down. As one of the most senior officials of the world government, St. Charles's death was not concealed from the air. His purpose of making this call is to find Sengoku to find out about the situation. St. Roswald also watched the video. When Sora heard this, his face was a little ugly. Yes, I'm worried that something might happen to him. You'd better send someone to protect him. Sengoku on the other side of the phone worm said. And almost Sengoku just finished saying this sentence. In Kong's ears, there was a scream after another. What happened? Kong suddenly got up, his face changed drastically. This is Marie Joys, all of whom live in Celestial Dragons. And now someone is screaming. If the person who screamed was Celestial Dragons, the consequences would be disastrous. All of this flashed through in Kong's mind like lightning and flint. He took three steps in two steps, rushed to the office window, and looked out into the dark night. I saw it. The bungalows in which the various Celestial Dragons lived were in chaos. One by one, Panicked figures ran out. Some people fell on the ground and broke their heads. It seems. In the bungalow where they live, some ghost is killing it. Ding. Kama El Saint is frightened, frightened point plus two. Ding. Sharmako Saint is frightened, frightened point plus two. Ding. Saint Musgrid was frightened, frightened point plus two. Ding. This moment. Luo Wen, who was far away and impelled down, had a system alert sound beside his ears, which was maxed out. Something happened on my side, I'll tell you later. Sora finished speaking to Sengoku's phoneworm, hung up decisively, grabbed the phoneworm, stuffed it into Kabuto, and rushed towards the place where the screams were made outside. At the same time, the CP agencies stationed in the Holy Land Marie Joys are all in action. Too many figures in white robes flickered. They appeared from all over the street and rushed to the home of celestial dragons who screamed. However, waiting for these CP personnel is, tragic scene. A corpse fell in the room, and the exposed skin appeared blue-black. All are celestial dragons. The most alarming thing is that wherever there is a scream, there is no support in time. When they arrived, without exception, celestial dragons were all dead. This death is more than a dozen, and he didn't even see the shadow of the murderer. This kind of thing happens. Even five elders, who had fallen asleep, were alarmed. 
These five powerful and powerful figures rush to the scene of the crime overnight. Tonight is destined to be a sleepless night, and the whole holy place will be lively. Three o'clock in the middle of the night. Many people gathered in the place where the screams first occurred. The residents of the Saint Rosd. It's a ghost, it's the female ghost in that videotape. Ghost, ghost, ghost. The face of Saint Roswald was extremely ugly, and the cold sweat slipped from his forehead drop by drop. He saw his daughter was killed by a ghost. The ghost in white came out of the videotape and grabbed Cholulia Palace's neck. Strangled her alive. Strangled her to death. At this time, Sora rushed over, looking at everything, his face changed one after another. After a short silence, after taking a step back in the air, he took out Sengoku's phone bug and dialed it. What you worried about happened. Very similar to Sengoku, the phone worm with an explosive head, after Sora finished saying this, his expression changed obviously. Then Sengoku's anxious voice came from the phone bug's mouth. Did that female ghost appear in Marie Joy's? Is there anything wrong with Saint Rosevard? Isn't he dead? Not dead. Upon hearing this, Sengoku on the other side of the phone worm just breathed a sigh of relief. Sora's voice sounded again, but a dozen celestial dragons died. What? Sengoku almost smashed the phone bug in his hand. Just as the sky continued to speak, there were steady footsteps at the door. Five noble figures appeared, breaking through the night. Five five elders are here. The first to bear the brunt is five elders with curly hair and a hat, slightly bent over. He scanned the surroundings with his old and sharp eyes, holding a cane and tapping on the ground, signaling everyone to be quiet, and his gestures were full of majesty and dignity. Master Five Elders. Sora bowed to Five Elders, hung up the phone worm calmly, and put the phone worm away. The blonde Five Elders nodded slightly towards Kong, without saying anything extra. Marie Joy had such a big thing, even the Five Five Elders' faces were a little ugly at the moment. What did you say? The videotape is with you. On the other side, Rosevard Saint, who was on the phone, did not notice the arrival of five elders at all. At this moment, his expression is extremely angry. After the daughter's death, a brief period of fear passed. Saint Rosevard took out the phone bug and asked CP0, who remained in the naval headquarters to investigate, why he wanted to take the video to him and kill his daughter. However, the answer that Saint Rosevard got was yes. The videotape is still in CP0's hands. Then, what is the videotape they watched? At this moment, Rosevard's sacred tooth trembles, as if someone behind him is blowing a cold wind on him. Then, what is the videotape they watched? St. Roswald's face turned pale. Maybe there are two on the video. At this time, Nagabe Five Elders, who had already learned that everything had happened tonight, suddenly said. Hear the voice coming from behind. St. Rosd immediately turned his head and bowed to several Five Elders with hindsight. Master Five Elders. Sorry said five elders, who was wearing a Taoist robe and a famous sword hung around his waist. The voice fell. He turned around vigorously and decisively and fiercely ordered the next to Kong. The videotape must be destroyed, but before it is destroyed, celestial dragons must not be profaned. The murderer who killed celestial dragons must die, even if the opponent is a ghost. Sora, you go to watch the videotape immediately and kill the thing that is neither human nor ghost. Dao robe five elders is decisive and cannot be rebutted. Yes. Hearing this, nodded empty. At the same time, impel down the sixth floor, Luo Wen in eternal hell, knows everything that happened in Marie Joy's. As expected of five elders, the methods are really tough. Luo Wen chuckled to herself. He admired the decision of five elders, and it was very decisive, without a trace of muddle. But. It's a pity. Luo Wen was lying on the soft big bed that didn't know when, Shun came, with a smile on his face. Destroying the videotape will not prevent Sadako from killing. Luo Wen himself knows Zhenzi's methods and abilities. Videotapes can spread. This spread is not only human to human transmission, but it can also spread by videotape itself. Sadako can control and automatically play the contents of the videotape through the screen, even if there is no videotape on the TV. This is one of Sadako's abilities. She can let people who have watched the videotape, and those close to them, see the contents of the videotape. In the movie, when the heroine's son was watching TV, Sadako played the videotape and became the next target of the ghost. I don't know how many celestial dragons died, will celestial dragons move out of Marie Joy's? Inside the dark corner of the cell, Luo Wen, sitting on the bed, murmured with a smile. His purpose is simple. Keep killing. Killing Marie Joy's has become a haunted shrine, killing celestial dragons and having to move out, let the videotape thing completely spread to the world. But at this moment, ding. Rosevard Saint is frightened, frightened point plus two. Ding. 
Saint Gracie is scared, scared point plus two. Ding. Saint Nicholas is scared, scared point plus two. The prompt tone after another sounded continuously. Hear this voice. Lua Wen smiled. It turned out that Celestial Dragons was scared. In just one night, the Celestial Dragons, who claimed to be the nobles of the world, died at once more than ten. As things got worse, more Celestial Dragons knew about it. They are scared. As the Supreme of Rights, they are more afraid of death while enjoying their rights, and they are reluctant to give up their rights and rich and extravagant lives. Converge your thoughts. Luo Wen called out the system panel. Host. Luo Wen. Strength. A bounty of 67 million yuan. Do not use the strength of the ghost power. Ghost. Ozada Sadako, Hanako, Basha Sama. Scare points, 339. Props. Videotape looking at his growing strength, and the rapidly growing number of shock points. Luo Wen smiled knowingly. It seems that it won't be long before you can smoke another ghost. This idea just appeared. Luo Wen's heart moved. He felt that Hanako was back. Patter, patter. The sound of fine footsteps sounded, again like the sound of drops of blood dripping. Red skirt Hanako appeared from the darkness. Master, I'm back. Wazi returned to Luo Wen's arms and sat on Luo Wen's lap nicely. How many people did Hanako kill this time? Luo Wen hugged Wazi and rubbed her little head with a smile. Hanako worked very hard and killed 13 prisoners and 5 guards. Hanako listened very much to the master's words and killed all bad guys who did evil. Hanako let Luo Wen touch her head, like a well-behaved kitten. Hanako is so good. Luo Wen rubbed the top of Wazi's head vigorously, making a mess of her black hair. While Luo Wen teased Wazi, it is separated from the other side of the Blue Sea. Inside the Holy Land Marie Joys, Sora took the videotape and returned to his residence. He dialed Sengoku's phoneworm again and told Sengoku of Five Elders' decision. Sengoku changes color after hearing this. Sora, you must be cautious, that videotape is not easy. The phone worm resembling Sengoku's eyes widened, cold sweat faintly flowed from his forehead, and his expression was very nervous. I will be careful. Nodded empty. A videotape can turn Marie Joy's over, he can't be careless. Hear the affirmative tone of an old friend. Sengoku was a little relieved now. By the way, I'm also investigating the videotape. Initially, it is certain that this has something to do with a pirate named Luo Wen. I will let you know if there is something to be gained. Sangoku said again. Okay, I'll wait for your news. Then, after the two said something more, Kong hung up the phone worm. Put the phone worm on the table. Sora took out the videotape and inserted it into the player. Soon, the projection screen appeared. The scene of Sadako climbing out of the well is played again. Sora didn't blink his eyes and watched the videotape carefully without missing a single detail. Wait until the videotape is over and black and white snowflakes appear on the projection screen. Take out the videotape. Then, as usual, he took off his clothes, lay on the bed, and closed his eyes to sleep. But if you look carefully, you can find it. Although Sora closed his eyes and breathed smoothly, the muscles in his whole body did not relax for a moment. He was alert, the female ghost that might appear in the middle of the night. Not only that. In an empty room, kilometers away, in a dark corner that is not easily detectable, white suits are faintly visible. All of them are the direct CP0 of five elders, the top CP0 with the best combat effectiveness, and even the chiefs of CP0 are standing by in the dark. According to Kong's plan, they have been hiding at a distance that will not be too late to support them, so that Kong alone can lead out ghosts, and at the same time support the first time. However, time passed bit by bit. It was close to five o'clock in the middle of the night, just before dawn. Kong suddenly opened his eyes, did it not show up? He straightened up from the bed, slippers on the bed, pretending to go to the toilet. Suddenly, Kong's muscles are tight, and every hair is standing upside down. In his pupils, a faint red light flickered. Seeing and hearing color is on. Now, the direction of the empty look, is the shadow of the corner of the toilet. And the moment he looked at it, the ghost of a woman in white disappears in a flash. Appeared. Air is already a combat situation. Hoo hoo. In the originally calm room, there was a ghostly mood in an instant, and the temperature dropped vertically. Kong's body is tight, ready to go, the empty commander. There was a sudden sound from the special miniature earphone made by CP mechanism in my empty ear. The monitor couldn't see the unexpected ghost, but saw the subtle changes in Sora's expression and posture. At this moment, the CP0 guarding surveillance everywhere stood up. You don't need to come over, Kong said suddenly. He is self-confident, and he is also afraid of people coming to make trouble finished. Sora looked around more vigilantly. 
The rainbow light in the pupils, which represents the opening of seeing and hearing, did not stop for a moment. Okay, empty. Chi chi, the phone worm went on and off. At the same time, the lights flickered, as if there was a problem with the circuit. After several flashes, the light is completely broken. Coming. Empty five fingers clenched slightly, unprecedented vigilance. At the same time, monitoring room. There is a problem with the route. The emergency connection is invalid, and the signal of the air commander is lost. It can't be connected at all. In an instant, the control room was in chaos. The monitor that originally played the empty room was completely dark at the moment, and all the pictures were lost. The CP person in charge of the contact walked back and forth, but still could not re establish the connection with the empty. Just then, the screen in the monitoring room suddenly chirped, and all the screens began to flicker, as if the circuit had been invaded by something. Accompanied by a cold and depressed breath enveloped the entire monitoring room. Everyone obviously felt the temperature drop sharply, and some even subconsciously got goosebumps. It's that ghost, that ghost has appeared, someone yelled. This happened in the surveillance room when Celestial Dragons was killed before midnight today, and all the electronic equipment temporarily failed. And now this situation is happening again. It means that the ghost in white is very likely to appear again. Quickly, fix the surveillance, this time we must catch the female ghost. The head of the monitoring room yelled and issued instructions quickly. But it hasn't waited for the technicians to start repairs. The screens in the surveillance room that were originally flickering snowflakes changed abruptly. Picture. Back to the darkness again. Nothing is different from before. This time, the picture is a deep dark night, so thick that it looks like spilled ink, which makes people feel uncomfortable. Then. An old Madara barge, an ancient well with black and heavy pressure, gradually emerged. At the same time, there is a nail scraping sound, which is played out of the speaker without any warning. It is not like a recorded audio, but more like a person hiding in the speaker and picking up the wall with his nails. It's creepy. Oh shit. The head of the monitoring room opened his eyes wide, his mouth opened in a sentence burst out uncontrollably. Inside the well of the ancient house, a white figure appeared, climbing on the wall in a distorted posture, moving the limbs and joints in a non-human posture, crawling out of the well and coming out of the screen little by little. And that nail scraping, is the sound of this woman in white climbing a well. What is this? CP3 had a numb scalp when he saw the white clothed woman appear, and he subconsciously opened the door and left. They are not opponents, those CP0 guarding celestial dragons were also killed. However, his hand pressed the doorknob hard. But the door can't be opened, it was like someone outside the door, stubbornly resisting the door, not letting anyone out. Next moment, the CP3 heard a scream of horror behind him. Damn, she's out. The moment the sound rang, CP3 looked back subconsciously. The eyes of the dead are close at hand. What? The screams resounded across the night sky. The door of the monitoring room is sewn under. Dark red blood flows out. Ding. CP3 gray frightened, frightened point plus five. Ding. CP2 Kent frightened, frightened point plus five. Ding. CP0 Bergwak is frightened, startle a little. Impel down. Magellan routinely patrols. Looked at the direction of the sixth floor, he has a headache now. No guard dared to go there. Recently, the sixth floor has been very haunted. Many guards who entered have been killed, making people afraid to step in. Now. In the sixth floor eternal hell, no one disturbs Luo Wen. Sitting cross-legged on the sofa. Put a book on his lap and flip through it with his head down. Next to it, on a delicate wooden table top, a candle was lit, and an orange flame was swaying. He got all those things back. The cell became a hut for enjoyment. Magellan knew these things, felt a headache about it, and didn't intend to remove the furniture again. Anyway. Taking it away won't solve the problem, maybe these things went back inexplicably the next day. And the most important point, Magellan asked Hanaibal, but Hanaibal did not help Luo Wen. When I thought that this might be Luo Wen's ex-girlfriend, who helped Luo Wen move, Magellan felt weird. In the end, he didn't let people go and remove Luo Wen's furniture again. Thinking of Luo Wen's strange and weird places, he really didn't dare to let the guards contact Luo Wen too much. I'm afraid and a batch of them died unknowingly. At this time, Luo Wen, who enjoys a comfortable life, is being observed by criminals in eternal hell. Luo Wen, or if you give us some food or play, this prison is boring to death. I can tell you the location of a treasure trove. I will definitely not suffer. Joe the drunkard tilted his head and said with a smile. What's the use of the treasure land, I won't go out. Luo Wen answered casually and continued reading the books indifferently.
This is a book that records the customs and customs of the pirate world, and it looks very interesting. Let your ex-girlfriend go out, aren't you that ghost woman your ex-girlfriend? Choate shook his head and smiled. But this time, Luo Wen didn't answer him and read the book intently. Choate curled his lips boringly, and lay back on the cold and simple prison bed. And this scene. Both Jinbei and Ace saw it. They looked around the criminals who kept talking to Luo Wen and wanted Luo Wen to help them get their stuff in. Finally. Ace and Jinbei looked at Luo Wen's room again. Luo Wen is still turning the book calmly. There is no emotional ups and downs in the temptation of people around. A very dangerous weirdo. Ace looked forward to the cage and looked at the man in the cage. Under the swaying lights, Luo Wen's profile was illuminated, and he turned the pages of the book seriously. There are indeed many sounds around. Ever since the prisoners of eternal hell saw that he could carry things in at will, they talked out loud from time to time, hoping that Luo Wen would help them get something too. Luo Wen is used to this and doesn't bother to take care of it. Close the book. Luo Wen turned a deaf ear to the sounds around him and looked up at the wall clock on the wall. This is an object brought in from the office of the warden Magellan. Luo Wen finds it very easy to use, he can clearly tell the time in this dark cell. Sadako has started, go and see. Luo Wen felt a little bit. He stood up, walked to the desk, and put the book in its original position. Immediately bend down slightly and blow out the half-burning candle. The cell was plunged into darkness again. Luo Wen picked up the blindfold on the table and put it on, pulled it down to cover his eyes, and lay back on the sofa. Close your eyes. First came the darkness. After a short while, a bloody room with stumps and arms scattered all over the place appeared in front of Luo Wen. The CP agency monitoring room has been executed by all staff. At the same time, the empty side, the light bulb in the room is broken. Dawn has yet to come. Only darkness can be seen. Now. The empty station was fixed in the living room, he was always vigilant and did not relax for a moment. However, after the light bulb broke, Jing Hong glanced at the ghost in white clothes, Sora never saw the ghost again. It's weird. It was as if the female ghost suddenly disappeared, left this room, and went elsewhere. My brow frowned when I thought of this, but at this moment. The TV in the living room suddenly turned on strangely. Snow flickered on the screen, followed by a weird and gloomy picture. It was an old Madara refuge, standing quietly in the middle of the screen, full of uncertainty, like a bottomless abyss, which made people creepy. Sudden, the empty pupil shrinks violently. After waiting for a long time, he saw the ghost again. Deep in the bottom of the well, a pale ghost appeared, and his skinny arms came out, crawling out of the well a little bit. Do not. Wrong. This is not a ghost, it's just in the videotape, it's just a picture. Before Sora had time to think more, he suddenly smelled a bloody smell, just, behind him. Suddenly, turning around, I saw a woman in white who didn't know when to stand behind him. And, on the woman's hand that turned blue from white, thick blood was dripping. The blood was still fresh, it was obvious that the person had just died. Moment. Kong's face is ugly, he is here to wait for the arrival of the female ghost, and the female ghost has really come, but he did not come to find himself, and went to other people. No time to think about it. Suddenly, he moved. Boom. The strong right arm was raised, and his fist exploded like a cannonball. Suddenly, the horrible air current was raging, the curtains in the room tremble, and the teacup next to it exploded directly. This punch. Unbiased, in the middle of the head of the female ghost in white. However, the fist went through, no entity. Um. The empty pupils shrank suddenly, and he looked at his palm, covered in black and red luster, with a murderous in the thickness. When he threw this punch, he had already used the armed color coil and conqueror's hockey coil. Good. It is the conqueror's hockey winding technique that only a handful of powerful players can use throughout the world. This is the absolute highest physical skill. Everyone who knows this kind of move is an undefeated figure in the sea. Such as the One Piece Roger, the strongest man Whitebeard, and the strongest creature Kaido. However, it turned out to be ineffective, unable to touch the woman in white. For an instant, Many thoughts flashed through empty mind. I have used such a high-level hockey technique, but I still can't touch it. Not Logia demon fruit power? It's really a ghost. At this moment, the pale woman's hands came out, protruding from the cuffs of the white dress, and the blood vessels under the white to blue skin were revealed, like twisted snakes, terrifying and making people stand upside down. Moment. The pale woman caught the empty. Visible to the naked eye. On Kong's arms, small hairs stand up like a cold air climbing the infected Kong's skin. Boom. Sora clenched a fist and blasted out, 
breaking the air while breaking free from the pale woman's arm, her body bursting back. Patter. The table was silently overturned, teacups and vases all fell apart. When I retreat, I was a few meters away, leaning against the wall behind my back. Now. He ignored the others, raised the arm held by the pale woman, and looked at it. The entangled conquerors and armed color faded like a tide, and there was a genning black ghost handprint on the original skin. Once Marshal Marine, now the commander-in-chief of the entire army, one of the world's best physical skills, Sora, known as Kong, faced Sadako, even if he used the two-color hockey defense, he was still imprinted. Next moment, Sora retracted his eyes and looked up again. Ahead, the pale woman disappeared abruptly, just like when she came, without a trace of it being revealed. Originally, where she was standing, there was a cloudy wind blowing, the curtains trembling, and the moonlight came in, making people feel more and more cold. At the moment when the silver moon shines on Kong's profile, Bai Ying flashed past, just beside Kong, bang bang bang. The empty hands came out together, the armed color wrapped around conquerors at the same time, covering the fingers, and dozens of finger pistol hits in an instant, the terrible force shattered the surrounding air, and a vacuum zone appeared, setting off a harsh sonic boom. The white shadows flickered, finger pistol fell through. At this moment, Sora suddenly stabbed in the back, staggered forward and fell. Someone behind? But he was clearly leaning against the wall. Kong was shocked, and his thick thighs used force to smash the floor of the room to stabilize his figure. At the same time, Sora turned his head back as fast as he could, and this look made the skin on the back of his neck get goosebumps. Do not know when. A little girl in white, standing behind Kong, no heartbeat, no breathing, no sound from beginning to end. It was obvious that there was a wall behind it, and there was no room for action, but she appeared like this, as if ignoring the wall and penetrating through, it made people horrified to think about it. However, after all, Sora was fighting in the sea, and the terrible battle could have made him react instantly. He stepped on his feet and jumped out of the window. After he landed on the ground, he rolled back and quickly turned his head back. The rainbow in his eyes flashed, turning on armament hockey and looking into the dark room. With a hint of bright moonlight, Sora has a clear view of the interior of the house. The curtains were windless and automatic, and the TV's snowflake screen flickered. In the depressing darkness, two white figures with black hair splitting their faces floated, and their toes did not fall to the ground. One big and one small, standing side by side, ghostly. Two female ghosts? The empty pupils shrank suddenly, isn't there only one female ghost? Why are there two appearing in his room now? Ding. The commander-in-chief of the army, Kong, is frightened. Frightened point plus one oh. Ding. The commander-in-chief of the army, Kong, is frightened. Frightened point plus one oh. Ding. The army commander Kong was frightened. Now. In Luo Wen in Impel Down, there were clear reminders in his ears. It seems that the harvest is good. Luo Wen said softly in his heart. Temporarily let Osadiko follow the videotape, Marie Joyce was right. The two female ghosts shocked Sora one after another, and got a lot of shock points. At the same time, because of the arrival of Da Sadako, not only Sora was frightened, but also many people in Marie Joyce were more frightened and even more frightened. But actually, Marie Joy Luo Wen only intends to let Xiao Zhenzi be responsible, and naval headquarters is Da Zhenzi. Through Sadako's eyes, Luo Wen clearly sees that the emptiness at this moment has never been on guard. Kong stared at the two female ghosts in the house, her heart was astonished, like a man on her back. A female ghost is already terrifying and cannot be touched and attacked, let alone, as long as she touches it, it will cause muscle necrosis. Kong deeply felt the pain and weakness in his arm touched by the female ghost in white, and he might not be able to return to the peak for a period of time. And more importantly, the female ghost ignored the two-color hockey defense and left a ghost handprint on his arm. Sora does not know what this means, but it must be an ominous thing. And now, two such terrible female ghosts came here at once. Sora looked at the female ghost in the house warily. He even gave birth to the idea of retreating if he loses. This is an extremely rare idea in the life spanning the sky and the sea. But at this time, without warning, the large and small white ghosts disappeared at the same time, the automatic TV set turned off, and the screen went black again. The icy temperature inside the house also warmed up, the horrible ghost spirit receded, and the dangerous murderous intent disappeared. Empty brow furrowed, still staring at the scene vigilantly. A moment passed. There was peace in the house, and there were still no female ghosts, as if they had really left. Sora hesitated briefly, walked into the house again, and searched carefully. Time goes by. The sky was white. 
The first light in the morning broke through the darkness, shone from the distant sky, spilled on the window sill in front of Kong's body, and shone into the house. The figure of the female ghost still did not appear, as if everything had returned to normal and calm, everything that happened last night was an illusion. However, the cracked floor in the house, the overturned coffee table, and the broken teacup all proved that the night was not peaceful. The morning light poured into the house. The darkness faded, and the sense of uncertainty disappeared. Sora re-entered the house and checked the surroundings. If you look closely, you can see that Congo's muscles are tight, like a tiger ready to go, still maintaining the highest degree of vigilance. One minute, two minutes. Time passed by a little bit. The ghost in white did not appear again, as if she had really left. Thump thump. At this time, uniform footsteps sounded outside the house. White suit figures are flashing across the street, rushing towards the house, they are the direct CP0 of the group of five elders. Captain Kong, Chief CP0, who was the first to bear the brunt, rushed into the house quickly, his expression dignified and nervous, and his expression unsightly. They made an agreement with Sora to come in to see the situation no matter how dawn. Last night, after the communication was interrupted, there was an accident in the monitoring room, and no information was received all night. They were worried, but no one entered this room in advance to see what happened. Because Sora said, let them not come, they also believe in Sora's strength, besides other reasons, no one wants to come in. The moment the female ghost in white appeared, it meant that this room had become a murder field. However, the results are not unexpected. Sure enough, nothing happened, so why not let him go? Chief CP0 said in his heart, slightly relieved. After all, the female ghost killed only some celestial dragons and unsuspecting CP personnel. The methods are indeed strange and unpredictable, but the power of Sora is real. To be able to sit in the position of the commander-in-chief of the whole army, in addition to sufficient strategy, strong strength is indispensable, the female ghost can't help him too naturally. But soon, the CP0 chief found something wrong. Kong's face was pale, it seemed that he had suffered some trauma, and there was a black mark on Kong's arm, like a woman's palm print. Those dead celestial dragons, have such ghost handprints. At the same time, behind Kong, his clothes were broken, and the exposed muscles were black and white, as if they had shrunk. What happened to Commander Kong last night? That ghost. I didn't deal with it. Before the CP0 chief had finished speaking, Sora replied aloud. I'm going to meet Lord Five Elders. Sora shook off these words without any extra words, and quickly walked out of the room, heading straight to where Five Elders was right. And at this moment, the special miniature earphones in his ears restored communication, and a terrifying emergency information came out of the headset. Master Dubois was killed, celestial dragons are dead again? Moment. Suddenly, after midnight yesterday, the two female ghosts who suddenly disappeared did not really leave, but changed a place, continue to kill. The other side. Luo Wen sat up from the bed and stretched comfortably. He took off the blindfold, doubled the current scene, returned to normal, and Sadako's link of sight was interrupted. Luo Wen did not sleep. In addition to looking at the situation on Sadako's side, it was also because the system prompts kept ringing in his mind. Ding. The commander-in-chief of the army is frightened. Frightened point plus one oh. Ding. CP0 chief Calvin was frightened. Frightened point plus eight. Ding. CP0 guy is particularly scared. Scared point plus five. Ding. Celestial dragons Dubois Saint is scared. Scared point plus three. Ding. The harvest is rich. Luo Wen smiled and called out the system panel. Host. Luo Wen, combat power, 70 million, do not use the power of ghosts. Scare point. 1404 look at the apparently skyrocketing startled point. Luo Wen opens the system store. The haunted system, in addition to spending scare points to extract ghosts, it can also redeem some incredible items. For example, Luo Wen's combat power enhancement capsule, brushed in front of her eyes. Strength boosting capsule. After taking it, it can directly increase the fighting power without side effects. As the number of uses increases, the effect decreases. The price is 100 startle points. Buy. Luo Wen's voice fell. There is a small blue capsule in the palm. Throwing it into your mouth, the capsule instantly turned into a chi shape, digging into Luo Wen's blood and hundreds of limbs, disappearing without a trace. Puff. At this moment, Luo Wen's heart beating was strong and powerful. He clearly felt that his muscles were becoming rock solid, and his reaction speed was becoming lightning fast. And all of this is clearly reflected on the system panel. Host. Luo Wen, combat power, 150 million, do not use the power of ghosts. Scare point. 1304 take a capsule. 
the combat effectiveness has been directly increased by 80 million. Doubled. It turns out that taking a small pill can really rise. Luo Wen smiled jokingly. He did not choose to continue to redeem the power capsule, but looked at other items on the system mall page. Conqueror's Hockey. The special ability of the pirate world, the proof of the king's posture, the weak will be suppressed and stunned when touched, the price is 50 frightening points. So cheap. Luo Wen frowned. Conqueror's Hockey is known as the proof of the king's posture. If you are born without the qualifications, you can't awaken in any way. To some extent, it represents a person's potential. More importantly, in the past, some people at Conqueror's Hockey might think that it is just a skill to clean up trash fish, and it is not used much in strong to strong collisions. But since Conqueror's higher level uses were developed, this statement has ceased to exist. Wrapping Conqueror's Hockey on a weapon or body can burst out a more powerful force than an armed color. Even the world's strongest creature Kaido cannot withstand such a force, leaving scars on his body. It can be said that the importance of Conqueror's Hockey has risen linearly. In the system mall, 50 startle points can be redeemed. Without hesitation, Luo Wen chooses to redeem. There was no obvious change this time, but Luo Wen can feel that there is an extra kind of key in his body, and he can mobilize it at will when he wants to release it. Then, Luo Wen saw the two color hockey again. Armament hockey. Special ability of pirate world, can enhance defense and attack power after use, the price is 10 shock points. Observation hockey. Special ability of pirate world, can enhance perception ability after use, the price is 10 shock points. Very cheap, compared with hundreds of other props, Luo Wen feels that the two color hockey is cheap and easy to use. Redeem again, it only costs 70 scare points back and forth. Luo Wen already owns Conqueror's Hockey. It can be said that without relying on the power of ghosts, he has officially stepped into the ranks of the pirate world. Scare point. 1234. Look at the remaining startled point. Luo Wen exchanged another expensive item, storage space. Storage space. A different dimensional space that can store goods and living things, the size of a basketball court, the price is 400 startled points. Get a warehouse for storing things. Luo Wen flicked his fingers on the shop. I redeemed dozens of objects in a row. Automatic power generation refrigerator. Candle that burns endlessly, foldable and expandable leather sofa set, different dimension TV set. Please Ashiki's furniture. They all have special functions and are bound to Luo Wen. Others can't move them by any means. The most important thing is that the cost is cheap. Just a scare point. Moment. With a wave of Luo Wen's palm, all the original ordinary furniture was thrown into the storage space and replaced with the magical small furniture produced by the system. Lie comfortably on the sofa. Luo Wen decided to spend the last time. System, lottery. Ding. Consumption of scary points, draw a lottery. Ding. In this lottery, you won the ghost, Joker, Joker. The resentful ghost of the clown incarnation in the clown's soul, synonymous with horror, cruel demon.